up and welcome to the Game Positive Podcast. It has been a long time since I've recorded anything, but I could not let an E3 season slip by without uh, talking about some video games. And thankfully, I have Alex here from Season Gaming join me in the Xscape X Button Podcast. How's it going, Alex? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I'm going to need you to carry me through this. I don't even know if I remember how to how to do a podcast <laughs> properly. Yeah. But Al- yeah, Alex is a writer uh, over at SG with me, and he's kind of pretty much carrying the carrying the team. The pretty much doing a review. It feels like every day, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, we're here today to talk about uh, the upcoming game showcases. It's showcase season, like I had mentioned. We have Summer Games Fest happening, I believe, on Friday, and then Sunday we have uh, yes, my personal favorite. If I want to get my put my biases on the table, the Xbox Showcase. Which I think is probably a lot of people's favorites nowadays, considering they're pretty much the only one that does it like like they did in the old in olden days. They're the only ones that do a showcase, (laughs) like an actual showcase showcase nowadays. Not directs, not a state of place, not just quick bites. It's actual like meaty showcases. Only Xbox does it nowadays, or so it seems. And we might get into a little bit of what uh, the differences between those different types of showcases uh, are in the news in a little bit. But before we get there, uh, let's start off by talking about what we're playing. So, Alex, what have you been playing lately? So, uh, I had committed to do a review for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake for the Nintendo Switch. I'm still kind of uh, working my way through it uh, because I was sick with a big fever and there's a lot of reading. That can get really uh, tiring when you're uh, <laughs> when you're sick, so... That has been a little slower than I wanted, and also because I'm waiting for a video capture card to show up because we have started doing more video content over at Season Gaming. And uh, though I've been writing a lot of the reviews for the site, I've been like uh, people like you and our video editor Ray uh, have been putting up more like video reviews, and I'm like, hmm, I'm I'm feeling left behind from the video side, so I need to catch up on that. So kind of like slow down a little bit because I definitely want to try to do a video review for that, but. Yeah, I've been playing. That, that has been kind of like my main, main new thing that I've been playing. Uh, other than the constantly dabbling in and out to Destiny as my life service choice. And me that I'm a big trophy hunter uh, over on the PlayStation side. I've been uh, working on the Final Fantasy 16 Platinum. But yeah, we can talk about that later. Tell me what you've been playing, Eric. Yeah, pretty much copy paste. Uh, except I'll trade you uh, Final Fantasy for Hypercharged Unboxed. Uh, that's a game that I'm currently reviewing for Season Gaming. Um, the review is uh, almost done. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's a little bit different than I expected. I don't know if you've seen anything about it. Uh, that's the there, toy shooter, right? Yeah, it had kind of some pretty viral, in my opinion, at least in my feed, viral marketing on Twitter. I feel like I've seen that game on Twitter uh, for my entire life at this point. Mm-hmm. Um But yeah, I thought it was a PvP thing. That's kind of like what they showcased. Um, And it does have a PvP mode, but I would say the the focus is definitely on its kind of PvE modes, which Mm -hmm. uh, there is kind of a loose single player or campaign storyline, but the core Mm -hmm. of it is more of a horde shooter. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of similar to um, Onslaught and Destiny, where you Mm -hmm. you just have waves coming in, and then in between waves you can build up like walls and, and different defenses and stuff like that but uh i mean you can see more of my opinion when the when the review comes out but uh yeah i've been playing paper mario which i love i think Mm -hmm. that is like a a amazing game like that is like peak nintendo storytelling Mm -hmm. um yeah which is a very different than uh pretty much any other game storytelling they're as sharp as writing like even more so like if 20 years removed like because that game came out in 2004 uh the writing in paper mario thousand year door is like always has me in stitches because it's so clever the innuendos they are able to kind of like sneak in for a game that's ostensibly like family oriented like always had me a yeah. gas of like how did they sneak this in this is this is actually pretty wild and a lot of that has been like retained from the original one and in fact like the mm-hmm. big thing has been that the original script translation of this game is finally like in the game uh compared to what it was like in 2004 so it's like we're getting it unfiltered this time so, yeah well, that game came out like in the Shrek era, mm-hmm. right? So, like yeah. Shrek, in my opinion, is an awesome movie that Shrek is very two. good. Shrek I love it. Yeah, Shrek. Yeah, I think uh, I think Shrek three came out the same year as Paper Mario, but um, um, actually, uh, Shrek three was two thousand seven. Shrek two was Paper Mario. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. You're. Yes. That's true. Yeah. Because I worked at the movie theater when <laughs> when that happened. There was a weekend where it was literally Shrek three. Spider-Man mm-hmm. 3 and, and Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean 3, 3. Mm-hmm. same 
and like our theater only had six screens so we had like two like three movies playing total Uh it was it was awesome um but yeah like shrek is a movie that when i'm a kid i think it's a funny like kind of goofy movie that i really liked and then if you watch as an adult there's so many jokes that you didn't get when you were a Mm -hmm. kid but but yeah i think that's a funnier movie now (laughs) even yeah exactly And I think that's kind of seeped its way in, into Paper Mario. But uh, I love it. It looks great. It plays great. Um, Destiny is I'm fully addicted again, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I'm recording this today is because the server maintenance is on for 24 yeah. hours. So we can't. I can't play yeah. it, so I might as well mm-hmm. do something else. Yeah, you're like a junkie that needs to fix. And right now they're like putting putting in pearl for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I'm really going to I'm freaking out right now. But uh yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. I I, I actually have been playing Final Fantasy 16 off like and a on year. since it came out, which I think was June last year. June 22nd. June or... mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been playing that since then. Uh, I am yeah. at the very last mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I got there, I decided to like clear out all the side stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like these uh, challenge rooms. Mm-hmm. I did only I only did one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to do those. And then I did buy the season pass. So, and, and the way that they're doing it is kind of, um, you could technically kind of... do the DLC now because the DLC is set right before the final mission. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's kind of like the outer worlds where the DLC is kind of not post game. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I haven't played it in a while. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I had this grand idea of getting right to the very end and then clearing everything up and then beating it. But then mm-hmm. I got to the very end, cleared everything in the base game up, and then I'm staring at like 10 or 15 more hours. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh my God. It's a long uh, game. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm way too far into to quit so i'll never do that but mm-hmm. i don't know when because like right after tomorrow when destiny comes out like then elden ring is here and then mm-hmm. god knows what's shown at the showcase yeah. so like and if destiny ugh. 2 is good that's always dangerous you like if that's like when destiny is good is like it's addiction guaranteed that's always kind of been my thing like yeah you sometimes hope like for the sake of backlogs and every every game around it that destiny is not that great that's kind of what happened with lightfall last year but if for some reason Final Shape is Witch Queen level good, or taking King Forsaken level good as they have been like aspiring, oh man, this this next two weeks are will be interesting for sure. Yeah, it's weird with Destiny though, because like I thought that Witch Queen was awesome. I reviewed mm-hmm. it. I think I gave it a not nine or nine. eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but I didn't think like the the rest of the year of the Witch Queen. Mm-hmm. era was yeah. as good as lightfall but i thought lightfall <laughs> was bad campaign and like the end, beginning of it but i mm-hmm. think it ended off awesome yes especially with the uh the into the light update is what clinched yeah. it at the end because the seasonal stuff only the third season of the year season of the witch was good because this was also a very experimental year for them when them trying to see how they could fix the seasonal model because that, that was getting really stale in the witch queen year that's why that year was like started so great and everything was kind of like going downhill from there uh and like sentiment was like seasonal stuff is the same old can we curse (laughs) yeah 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 it's the same old shit over and over uh and then then by the time we got to season of the seraph the season right before lightfall it had a great story had a great seasonal um uh, exotic mission that took you to like a satellite but Everyone was like, we're tired of this. It's like, you need to do something. And then the Lightfall seasons was them attempting it, but now Final Shape, they're completely eliminating seasonal content and moving into episodes. So, them yeah. experimenting still. Be interesting to see how that goes. I'm like, this is not a one to one example, but Halo transitioned from season to, to I think, they, I don't mm-hmm. think, I don't know if they call it episodes or. I think it's episodes actually. <clears throat> yeah it might be called episodes i th- i can't remember off the top of my head but uh i don't know there's pros and cons I, I, like i think overall with halo anyways i think it's a net positive mm-hmm. uh, we are getting maps a lot faster yeah. but i don't know i kind of uh really like the approach to live service that um yoshi p kind of laid out where it's not about trying to keep you like sucked into the game for your whole life Mm -hmm. uh it's about like peaks and valleys like they want there to be lulls and moments where you can go play something else and then Mm -hmm. for them to have to like earn you back 
Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what they do with Final Fantasy, the MMO, mm-hmm. which I don't really play, but just I'm talking more holistically about like the thought oh, yes. process. Everyone um, like, respects that process because it's like they respect their player base so well that they're like, when you run out of stuff to do on their stuff, cool, you played it. Go away. Yeah. Go play something and the else. And come back when we have comes. something. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then the big drop comes, and that's you get hyped about that. You're excited about that, and you mm-hmm. don't. And you don't have those periods where you feel like you have to log in, or and then you start to resent the game, which mm-hmm. I kind of happened to me with Destiny, to be honest. Same. Same. Um, so that's kind of the the trade off because yeah, the maps are coming faster, but I feel like there's just like these smaller battle passes that are coming more frequently, mm-hmm. and falling behind them, and blah blah blah. No. Whereas when there was big drops, it was real a real exciting moment for Halo, and then I could mm-hmm. go play something else when it wasn't exciting and yeah. come back. To give Halo a credit, especially how rough their live service uh, like development was, like post launch, like at least from the PvP side, which Obviously, we are, we're not going to regurgitate them having to cancel any plans for storytelling and all that. But just focusing on multiplayer. When they nailed in that they were just going to be multiplayer like support from there, they have supported Halo with so many maps, especially when Forge finally kind of came into the rotation. That is like, it's so content rich when it comes to like variety of PvP that um, yeah. that it took them a while. But when now that, it, that it's there, it's like it's very hard to like scoff at Halo as a PvP game currently. So, oh, I think in terms of arena shooter, if that's a kind of a descriptor we can use, uh, mm-hmm. aka like not a battle royale, mm-hmm. not a military sim, mm-hmm. uh, I don't the think top. there is. I don't think there's any competition, um, mm-hmm. unless maybe Concord is competition. Which brings us to yes, the yeah. news segment. <laughs> I uh, typically we have a lot of stuff to talk about for news. I think the most important thing to talk about is the showcases. So yeah. since the state of play already happened mm-hmm. and uh, it's technically at this point news, I'm mm-hmm. just we're just going to talk about the showcase, the PlayStation showcase or state of play, I should yeah. say. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in this new segment, <laughs> and yeah, so it'll be a little bit brief, but we'll mm-hmm. make up for it hopefully when we get into the Summer Games Fest and Xbox showcase. Mm-hmm. talk so uh alex what is your i guess i guess Rating. you can have your i guess you, i was gonna say what is your uh initial reaction but it's been like days so like mm-hmm. what is your yeah your, at this point in time reaction to the state of play i thought it was okay it was nothing great it was nothing terrible it was like it met the expectation of a state of play that was announced 24 hours before uh especially post announcement from the previous CEO that said that not to expect any big sequel to big franchise PlayStation stuff until after April 2025, when they announced uh, the state of play as, oh yeah, let's update you some stuff that's coming to the console, including some stuff from PlayStation Studios that are going to come out for the rest of this year. I thought it met expectations, and it was a mix of, that's not for me, that's kind of cool. Oh my god, I'm super excited for this. And you know which one it is. <laughs> so yeah. the one that it closed. But yeah, overall, it was just an okay uh, state of play, especially compared to the state of play from January that I thought was awesome. That was like 45 minutes. That was almost showcase-like. The one that had that Stranding 2 and the Fizzant at the end. And yeah, every game that they, had, they released for the first half of the year. So it felt like more momentous than this one. So this one felt more like we hit a beat of announcing stuff three times a year. We're not doing the showcase right now because... We have a console that we haven't really announced, but it's basically known secret now. So maybe they'll do a showcase at the end of the year to kind of coincide of them doing a push for that alleged console that the specs are already out there. But as of right now, it was eh, it was okay. Nothing too either way for me. So for me, mm-hmm. in a vacuum. Like nothing else being considered, just mm-hmm. the showcase on its own, I would mm-hmm. agree with you a hundred percent. My problem is is that Sony needs a yeah. showcase yeah. because they the barrel ran out. Everything yeah. that they announced is out. <laughs> so right now, I think mm-hmm. I correct me if I'm wrong, but there's Astrobot, mm-hmm. which I mean, I would say that's a triple A first mm-hmm. party game yeah it costs call, as much they call it world-class uh, franchise at their sony financials that you can see from last week it was like next to the big franchise yeah and stuff. yeah i agree with that mm-hmm. i think that game is going to be one of my favorite games this year mm-hmm. i think it will get nominated at the game awards for yeah. game of the year um but i don't think that 
that fits what most people think of when mm -hmm. you say triple a PlayStation like blockbuster mm -hmm. PlayStation block PlayStation blockbuster. Mm -hmm. So outside of that, we know of Wolverine, mm -hmm. which was announced 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, there's literally, there's, there's nothing that's been announced. Yeah. From first and, party, no, because uh, that's stranding a second party because yeah. they don't know Kojima productions. Right. And that's what I kind of, what I'm talking about here is, is from their first party because for me, as somebody who, admittedly, I would say, uh, I, I like all the consoles. I own them. I play on them all. I, I, like, I'm more connected to the Xbox brand just from, like, my whole life playing mm -hmm. Xbox. So I view PlayStation as, uh, like, only with their exclusives um, because, like, multi-plats I'm going to buy on Xbox. So I'm looking for the PlayStation 4 experience on mm -hmm. PS5, which is what it felt like, like, cause, and this is a little bit skewed because I got the PS4 late, but it felt like to me when I got my PS4, it felt like it was like one week was horizon. Then uncharted four, that's the wrong order, but then mm -hmm. God of war, then yeah. Spider-Man, then final fantasy seven remake, then last of us two. And it was just like back to back to back mm -hmm. to back. It just kept coming and coming. And then it, it, it if, there was like always like a roadmap with even more stuff coming because mm -hmm. they, they would like announce stuff so far out. And like you could make an argument that it kind of made the showcases a little bit less exciting because they would show like Spider-Man like three mm -hmm. or four times. But the reality is it didn't make them less exciting because everybody was hyped when they saw that stuff. The mm -hmm. few counts were there. The, the like to dislike ratio was heavily positive. Their momentum everybody was, was excited. Everyone was still like that. Them showing those games often even without a release date sometimes, they didn't like dampen the excitement people had for their console that became so successful at the end of that generation. So, Yeah, and it's like from my perspective from seeing those stuff multiple times was like, I don't want to see this anymore because I'm so ex you've gotten me so excited for this game that's coming in the future. And, and I don't have that feeling for anything because there's mm -hmm. nothing that's in other than Wolverine. There's nothing that that's really announced. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they desperately need a showcase and they just didn't don't have one yet. And I think mm -hmm. that if they, if they had a showcase now and then showed this exact state of play, uh, like in September or something like mm -hmm. that, yeah. completely different story. It's just, it's just, uh, the surrounding the circumstances mm -hmm. that hurt it, not the, pl not the games that were shown, mm -hmm. not the, the state of play on its own. And I kind of have like a little, I'll put a tinfoil hat on for a second. Mm -hmm. I think what's happening here, uh, I don't. I first of all, I don't think it's doom and gloom. Sony's in trouble or anything like that. Um, I think look at the financials. <laughs> Just yeah. look at the financials. They're yeah. doing good. Just like I don't think it's doom and gloom with Xbox, but I'm gonna save that for a different a different day. But I think what happened is pretty. I think, in my opinion, I think this is pretty obvious. Uh, Jim Ryan is leaving or was leaving. He announced that a while <laughs> ago. These things are planned really far in advance. And I think that state of place and especially showcases mm -hmm. are very big, like key pillars in how the brand is marketing itself. And I think that the CEOs of the company are going to be very, very much involved. It's kind of like the analogy I would say is like, imagine you're the owner of a sports team mm -hmm. and your general manager's leaving and you're going to replace him with a new general manager. And like the draft is coming up. Like, you you don't want to have the old manager, the old GM who's not going to have anything to do with the company very soon. Like Picking the draft, make basically. all kinds of draft picks mm -hmm. and spend a bunch of money in free agency, and then have a new guy inherit all of those decisions. Mm -hmm. I think it's better to have these new guys come in, Herman Hulse, and, and I can't the what's the other guy's name? Hide Hideaki something because it's that yeah. it's a two CEO approach that they're doing now. So yeah, I think it's better. Like I think it's literally better long term. For, mm -hmm. for them to have as clean a slate as possible and build the company in the way that they think is the best mm -hmm. own all the decisions and have them make all the choices. Yeah. And I think, I think they should plan the state of play. They mm -hmm. should plan the roadmap. They should plan all of that. And they just like, didn't have time to do that because this stuff would have been planned probably in December or earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So probably like, like uh, February four, because the last state of play was January and that one was a super packed one that even had Herman Holst in it. Like presenting some yeah, of the that, stuff there, so. But that January one would have been planned like mm -hmm. October, way before mm -hmm. September. So like, yeah, mm -hmm. like these things are planned way far in advance. Like Phil Spencer always talks about, like almost immediately after or even before the showcases that they're already working on the next one. Mm -hmm. So like these things are planned really far in advance, and I think that Sony is just 
keeping a lot of stuff close to the chest because mm-hmm. they want to have these guys determine how it's going to happen. I yeah. don't think that Sony is paying these massive teams because, like, I would say if you averaged out the 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 uh, seat count or the head count at PlayStation Studios, I don't think there's a publisher that has more developers per studio mm-hmm. uh, than than Sony. Like they like do. Xbox has mm-hmm. Xbox has more developers by a massive mm-hmm. amount. But they're all segregated into into these more manageable teams. Like Naughty Dog, I think is a, a, like a thousand. Lot. Yeah, in some because they close. have like two studios. Also, the one in North Carolina and the one in uh, Santa Monica. Also, so Santa yeah. Monica is also so day one. Yeah. There's no way that they would ever pay for those people to sit on their hands for mm-hmm. even to a week. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. they're doing stuff and, and they're and, talented, obviously. And one thing to notice because uh, Herman Hull said it, this like during like an interview, I think it was in 2022, around also the time when he mentioned that uh, live service games was going to be a console and PC simultaneous launch, which they reiterated that approach during the Sony Financials. He mentioned that he wanted to move to a more, we want to announce stuff when it's ready to release. And that technically came true with Astrobot. Because mm-hmm. it's like we had only heard it leaked, but that but the our look at Astro at the, at the state of play was our first look, and it had a release date. We go back to the PS4 generation where they announced the entire slate of that entire generation at the legendary E3 2016 press conference, the one that had a that had the big orchestra with that that started with God of War, and then it was like a bang bang yeah. bang of just exclusive after exclusive after exclusive. None of them with dates other than Horizon Zero Dawn at the time, so it was like. You had that approach, which was the uh, the Sean Layden approach of let's just shotgun blast the entire generation so they know what's coming. And now we're like in the complete opposite of we're going to show yeah. you when this goes. And it's like, I feel the best would be something in the middle personally. <laughs> like, uh, I, I understand. Think is, yeah. I, I think the best is the shotgun approach because mm-hmm. it literally it worked. Like, mm-hmm. it really, really worked. And to be honest, like, I think the whole like oh we're waiting to to reveal stuff closer to the release date. I think that typically that is uh, a nice way of saying we don't want to show anything or we mm-hmm. don't have anything to show yet. Because Xbox would always say that they would say oh we just want to everything in this E3 is coming in the next year. And mm-hmm. the real reason for saying that was because this is literally all we got, guys. There's there's <laughs> we yeah. are still trying to buy Bethesda. We're still trying to buy like Activision. Give us time. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think that that's a little bit of marketing speak, but Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I mean, I don't want Xbox to come out, and this is not like, I won't get too far into this a tangent, but I don't want them to come out on Sunday and be like, this is what's coming in 2028 Mm -hmm. or 2029, like obviously not, but yeah, there. if I had to say, if you're going to go in the middle, I'd say probably should still lean towards the shotgun Mm -hmm. if you you had to like land on a side, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's it's more because I think uh, you have a lot of uh, kind of like inertia of how many people that own PS4s are still in PS5s and live through the showcases of that era and are here now that even though they're doing really well, their perpetual silence always fills that, uh, that audience with so much anxiety because that's what kind of what's funny when we're in the, long back and forth we usually we, we tend to have in our staff chat over at season gaming is that i noted that uh sony technically always speaks three times a year but it's like because they're always so perpetually quiet you know you feel like they never speak they, they never speak and you don't know if they're gonna even speak around the same time that they usually do even though they end up doing it like twice already have they, they have already spoken on a may uh, twice already they've spoken either they've rotated between march february and january and three times already, they already spoken in September. One time a showcase, other times just a state of place. So it's like, even in their consistency, the, the fan base always feels so anxiety-filled because unlike their competitor, then they remain like that quiet in between. So, so that's that's kind of like what's so funny about it. So it's, I feel I feel that was a, a product of the Jim Ryaner because he was just not a great presenter. Let's just call it what it is. It was like a super corporate guy. So hopefully now that we have the this, this dual CEO approach and people do like Herman Holst, maybe now that they've taken reins literally two days ago, it was when they officially started as CEOs. Now maybe this is going to be the time where they're going to be a little bit more forward in like in, in how they communicate because now they, there's a guy just handling the business side. There's a guy just handling the creative side. Maybe now the creative side is going to go more forward. It's kind of like what's happening with DC with James Gunn and peter saffron yeah so it's yeah. like uh it, it, it reminded me of that i was like yeah james gunn is the one that's like front full frontal like talking a lot about <clears throat> the creative process what some of the plans are 
and Peter Safran is just handling the money and doesn't say a peep. <laughs> so mm-hmm. maybe that's maybe that's the approach. We'll see. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's actually a really good uh, comparison. Although I I I'm not I am not getting into this tangent, but I I personally don't think or I don't have a lot of faith in DC movies they have to earn it going forward. they totally have to earn it absolutely have to earn mm-hmm. it but that's like something for another time anyway mm-hmm. but yeah. uh so yeah yeah for me I, like showcase i'll just quickly say standouts for me i think i personally think that concord was revealed in a not great way mm-hmm. i Agreed. think that if you're going to showcase a uh pvp only game the probably worst thing you could do is give us a four and a half minute story trailer mm-hmm. in the beginning that's good um, looking that's actually good looking, like uh, in production oh, value. Looks great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a production value was a hundred percent there. I think the characters are kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like for me, I don't know if, if if this train of thought is kind of where you were, were on Concord. They showed not a lot mm-hmm. like last year. They showed us the name early. Uh, they showed and, nothing and, last year. <laughs> yeah, I nothing. knew it was had something to do with the spaceship. I knew mm-hmm. it was sci-fi. I knew it was Concord, and I knew it was a studio from X Bungie people. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking in my head, okay, sci-fi, Bungie, shooters sure. game, mm-hmm. Sony. I'm gonna get a Destiny that is more focused on story. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, when they announce it, they ha- they show us a four and a half minute cutscene. That is mm-hmm. exactly what I wanted to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're like, oh, it's a 5v5 PvP game. And I just had whiplash. Mm-hmm. Because that's not, and, and, and don't get me wrong, the gameplay looks fun. I know that's going to be fun because of who's making it. And I'm probably going to play a, a decent chunk of it. Mm-hmm. It's just like the reverse of what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Instead of being Destiny that's more focused on PvE, mm-hmm. it's Destiny that's more focused on Crucible. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like it's Overwatch. a Crucible, Crucible, the game with Overwatch skins, basically. <laughs> yeah, and heroes. Like even mm-hmm. like the, they even have like a grenade that they threw and stuck to a wall that had a light beam that connected together. Yeah, that's like a trip mine. Trip mine. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it's very close to Destiny Crucible, mm-hmm. um, and so it just was a weird way to reveal it, which, mm-hmm. in my opinion, has nothing to do with the developers. Um, no. I think the game actually looks good and i'm excited to play it i feel Uh, this game would have benefited from the apex legends approach of yes here's a trailer here's the showing you and before you start making any assumptions play it even if it's the beta beta available right now so that at least people could get hands-on with it because this is the kind of game that it's gonna live or die by the word of mouth how people tell it's like in august right yeah august 23rd so i bet the beta's in july so it's like they're giving a month for all the bad press to fill up, and you can go see the like and dislike ratios over at, yeah, over at the. Yeah, it's, it's really, really bad. bad because it's like, ugh, it doesn't present well this way, especially like with that whiplash that you mentioned. And yep, hopefully Plus they you're could need a PSN account. It's gonna mm-hmm. get review bombed on Steam, so you really need to nail. Like it's there's a lot of stuff that <laughs> Sony's doing that Firewalk has no control over that I think hurts the game yeah. uh that has nothing to do with the game i yeah. think the game looks fun um and I, and I would say holistically sony needed this game because they have not or at least they have needed a shooter that's first party for so long because the last time they did a shooter was kills on shadowfall at the launch of the ps4 they have not mm-hmm. had a first person shooter made by first party or second party in freaking forever so it's like yep. the existence of concord i'm not against because i'm like i've been asking sony to like diversify their portfolio for a little bit because they have repeatedly done the third person over the shoulder super cinematic high quality game uh, that every other game they have has like different quirks but they feel the same formula that is like yeah if you want like variety it's like you shouldn't be against the variety and that's kind of why i was like yeah do it with concord but they needed to present it better because it's like they need to make the case that they can still be the prestige single player guys but also have multiplayer because over mm-hmm. over the in the xbox side you can count them on for like and all multiplayer stuff, like, no problem. And they're only kind of, like, being more of the other single-player stuff. But there's more variety over in the Xbox side, so... X- that's I, like, I mean, just off the top of my head, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think Xbox is the only company that delivers the old style of, here's a game that has a campaign and a robust multiplayer. Mm-hmm. That's Who right else now, does that? No, no, one, no one else. Gears does that. Halo <laughs> does that. Call of Duty does that. Mm-hmm. And what other game it. does that? No one else. They no like, one. You're. Like, it's like one or the other now. 
Yeah. The um, last time uh, Sony p- uh, launched a single player and multiplayer game was Uncharted 4. Uncharted 4. Mm-hmm. And the and multiplayer is great. Yeah. But they, didn't, they just let it die on the vine. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think Concord I think Concord looks good. I would love it if mm-hmm. the collector's edition came with an Xbox controller yeah. that worked on the <laughs> PS5. Yeah. For like, because you're, more, you're, you're the offset guy. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, no, I think I think it was good. I think mm-hmm. I think it, the game it's good. Hopefully, it can overcome this. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, uh, Hell Divers Two had no hype going into that launch. Hell that, and then Hell Divers Two until like people got hands on with it, and then the yeah, thing launched. It didn't have negative hype right yeah. now. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Hype. So, so that's kind of like uh, uh, Concord already has like one foot behind because at least uh, Hell Divers had like instead of kind of like the no negative hype, he had no hype. And then it, w- it yeah. was when people got hands on, like briefly before the thing came out, that it was like, maybe there's something here. And then people played and were like, oh crap. So that this gameplay better be good whenever the beta comes out, because that's going to determine if this thing has any life. Yeah. And uh, I'll be there. On, I'll on be the playing there. I, Same. I, I'm optimistic. Mm-hmm. I'm optimistic. Um, yeah. I have faith in those people yeah. for sure. I'm going to support um, it for, out of principle of Sony. I need you to do more variety than the user tried into it. Kind of like <laughs> that's kind of got to be yeah. my support for it. So, but. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on quickly in relation mm-hmm. to Concord is not only did they showcase it in a weird way, but like mm-hmm. what was like the, I think it was the second game they showed after Concord mm-hmm. was Marvel's Rivals, which is literally Concord yeah. Overwatch style game, but with a massive, massive Marvel IP that's mm-hmm. going to be free to play. And, and it showed better and it looked better as a hero shooter, like with this Marvel Rivals thing, like when they showed the gameplay. They literally yes. copied Overwatch. Yeah. Even the font <laughs> is the same. Yeah, they're but, flying close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> really yeah, not, yeah. When it comes but to like copying. Sony, obviously has control over what they show and mm-hmm. they showcase. So they're I feel like they are setting. I I feel like if I was a developer at Firewalk, I'd be a little upset with how our game. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't know. It I think it gets lost on yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it gets lost on people a little bit that are not developers. And I'm not saying I'm a game developer, mm-hmm. but I think it gets lost on people how much these pe- the people that make these games like care. Mm-hmm. because like i don't like most people i would say their job is like they like not necessarily like creating something mm-hmm. and i'm not trying to sound pretentious or anything like that but it, there's a big difference between like going and performing like your your tasks that you're cha- that you have to do uh at, at your job um and then go home and like kind of are just constantly doing something uh mm-hmm. i don't know that i don't I'm trying to say this in a nice way mm-hmm. but um Maybe I'll just say the inverse. When you're a developer, like it's like you are building something from the from nothing over mm-hmm. years and years. And most of these these people are not working nine to five. They're working like nine to six, nine to seven, nine to five yeah. on a weekend, Crunch. stuff like mm-hmm. that for like three, four, five years. And they see this thing come from a blank screen into this thing that they and all of their coworkers and friends created from scratch. So it's like you you have like a a sense of attachment. Like when I used to work at a bank, right. And we just do like, I just did like tasks, like mm-hmm. a lot of the, t- a lot of repetition, a lot of the same stuff that was not serving really like a purpose. It was like a, just a job uh, and, uh, or whatever. And I feel like I'm saying like an asshole right now, but mm-hmm. like, I don't do anything even close to the same realm as making a video game, but mm-hmm. the stuff that I work on at work, like the stuff that I make, I have a sense of pride over mm-hmm. uh, a small sense of pride. Anyway, nothing even close to what these people would feel. Um, and it's just different. And so like you have an attachment to your work, something that you've committed a massive chunk of your life. Like if you're 30 years old and you spent five years making this game, mm-hmm. that's a huge chunk of time. Okay. And like, <laughs> and like this one moment, this like, it was like seven minutes, right? Four minute CG trailer, three minute gameplay trailer. And the five years you spent just gets kind of, like you said, you're, you have a one foot, you're taking a step back before you even launched. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that just sucks, and I think that I'd be very frustrated if I was them. But uh, it's not about like the, this what happens before the launch is what 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 happens after launch. So mm-hmm. yeah, I and hope it- that they can recover uh, from this kind of um, cloud of negativity that's surrounding mm-hmm. it. Because uh, yeah, I think that they that team has a lot of promise. I think the game has a lot of promise, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. Yeah, I was more interested with this than Fair Games, which was the other live service game that Sony announced. Not announced because it was just a CG trailer at the showcase last year. So it's like, uh, also that game in his reveal trailer had a lot of negativity coming in. So obviously they're trying to dip into waters that they have not touched in a while. So a lot of people that are PlayStation focused look at these games in a more negative light. And 
I really hope that they understand that they need to put these games more at the, in the hands of players so that, so that the narratives can stop like sh shifting because that's the only way. Otherwise, it's like, yeah. if it gets so flooded with negativity, no one's going to, uh, then people are not going to even try it because like the cloud is there. Why would he want to try to touch something that people just are actively like screaming and hating towards, even if it's undeserved. Yeah. So, well, look at look at X <clears throat> Defiant. When that game was revealed, everybody thought that like Tom Clancy <laughs> with like punk rock doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. and, and they had a negative cloud around it. And the developers had to kind of go underground and kind of make mm -hmm. a lot of changes and 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 address the feedback. And um, I think it was it made sense, and and it's a great game now. And they. Mm -hmm. They, I think there's it, start, it started division. really good at a preseason. Season one's coming soon. It's like it's, it has a great base, yeah. that they can build yeah. upon. So they did a great job, and <clears throat> and all of the stuff that people complain about at the reveal are is gone. It's not that's not in the game. Like yeah. it's not Tom Clancy anymore. It's not punk rock anymore. <clears throat> and um, if you like old school Call of Duty, pre Modern Warfare 2019, Exifyan fills that niche like actually yeah. pretty well. Like I was telling Ains that the game that it reminded me the most was Black Ops Four. It even had the health. The time to kill was very yep. similar to <clears throat> Black Ops 4, but the only <clears throat> difference is that you don't have a syringe that you have to constantly be pumping yourself for health. <clears throat> yeah, so. and I think the Mark Rubin, I think right around Black Ops 4 was when he left mm -hmm. and went to Ubisoft, and then yeah. that's like there was. And a, he used a, to be a an Infinity. War, he was a big Infinity War guy because he was the front face man for Ghosts, and I think he also did yeah. Infin Infinite Warfare. So I think he left ten years ago, so it would have been twenty. 14. 14 2015 something like that okay then after uh, ghosts left yeah 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 so uh yeah i don't know i think i i'm like i said optimistic about concord mm -hmm. i think when they showed the gameplay and i understood what it was and the shock wore off of being like completely wrong in my assumptions which mm -hmm. i mean there are just assumptions anyway it's not like sony said it's going to be all those things i thought mm -hmm. it was going to be yeah or firewalk said that but uh yeah in terms of the rest of the show um the yeah i uh, Marvel, a lot of stuff was shown already, like Marvel Rivals. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a hiccup with um, a lot of these new developers that are coming from like new mm -hmm. markets, from China and like the India, something like yeah, that. Yeah, China, yeah. India, South mm -hmm. Korea. They um, now, I will say, in recent times, they have been crushing like, mm -hmm. Power World. Uh, I think Power World's Japan, but like yeah. Stellar Blade, Korea, uh, like mm -hmm. that is like Lies really, of P really also good. from Korea. So Lies of P, exactly. So. Uh, but I just like I remember pretty recently games like Yuan Yuan Sword coming out looking mm -hmm. cool, but like always having some jank. So I would like to see some of these games. I thought the Ballad of yeah. Antara, I thought, Ballad of Antara, yeah, that it's out twenty twenty five. Yeah, the only thing that deflates me a little bit on that one was that in the PlayStation service. blog, it's free to play. So uh, that automatic a service game, it's yeah. a service co op game, yeah, yeah. So I was like, hmm. If, especially if it comes from a Chinese developer, that already like gotcha. Yeah. It's already kind of like always it's fills me with dread. Red flags. <laughs> so, yeah. But then so the other uh, are... when winds meet, which was the other one that also looked kind of souls like, more mm -hmm. souls like that even uh, about some card. That's a full on game. That's all, that's for next year. That one at least uh, you kind of know what to expect with that kind of game because we're in the post Elden Ring has inspired everything era right now where we're gonna keep yeah. getting these kinds of games. So, I think something like Stellar Blade and Liza P did a really good job of of separating itself mm -hmm. from those games, but staying in the genre. Yeah. Um, I don't see it as much with these. Um, yeah, these are but, straight up. These are straight up like they are going for the Sekiro. They're going they're, they're going yeah. for the uh, Phantom Blade Zero <laughs> that I thought was going to be here. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought one of them was Phantom Blade Zero. I kept calling it. <laughs> Yeah, that's how much they kind of meld together. Uh, Infinity Nikki, I thought was uh, a little bit weird, but yes, interesting. And I, X Zelda developers, did I read uh, that right? Yes. So that actually makes me mm -hmm. that makes me more excited about that. I would say outside of Concord mm -hmm. and probably and the the the, the Ender, which mm -hmm. is everyone's favorite game, I think Infinity Nikki might be my. I don't know want to say am I most excited about, but I think it's like I'm most intrigued about that because a lot of the other stuff, the VR stuff, doesn't really hit. The mm -hmm. Alien has is a good match, yeah. VR and Alien, but the trailer looked a little bit rough in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Sony is supporting the VR as much as they no. would be if it, and, if it was. Super and now successful. they announced today, funny enough, that when we're recording that the PC adapter for uh, to play all the Steam games is gonna be out pretty soon. 
So it's like, and it's, it's going to cost as much as a game, which uh, is yeah, 60 bucks for a thing. As I yeah. Can. So that's a little bit weird. I, mm -hmm. Right now it's on sale in Canada for, mm -hmm. I think, $130 off. Oh, okay. In the US it's 100 bucks. Yeah. So you can get it for 450 yeah. now. Still and I think that should, be the, that should be the MSRP. Yeah. And then it should go down from there on sales. I think that would be a good start. Yeah. But I'm not super into it. Uh, Silent Hill, I really like Bloober Team. Yeah. Did I don't you, think that. By the way, uh, just as I say, were you not to, the transmission? Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you. When I saw it in the transmission, I'm like, okay, I see something here now. The trailer that was at the state of play still was not very convincing. It was like, mm, there's just something here that looks off. But the transmission sold me a little bit more on that game. I'm not sold that it's going to be this amazing remake because Bloober Team can be a little hit, hit, hit or miss. But I felt the spirit of Silent Hill 2 more in the transmission than I did in the state of play. So okay. everyone go check the transmission I'll, if you want. Yeah, yeah, I'll because watch that. 30 minutes on cut. So you actually see the game. So, okay, that's mm -hmm. actually interesting. Mm -hmm. I will look at that. My thing with Bloober Team is I actually really like Bloober Team. Do I you really like the medium? Like I did like the medium. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I really liked the medium. I thought they did some clever stuff with the puzzles and they had really good atmosphere. And obviously the music was fantastic because they had uh, the the person who did the OST for uh, Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. But the medium was like a $50 game, Canadian, yeah. probably $40 American. And mm -hmm. it was, and the Resident Evil 4 remake is a thing that exists that mm -hmm. cost full MSRP. And that yeah. was a transformative experience. Um, I don't think games that last year. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a really good looking like up visual upgrade from Silent Hill 2, but more or less the same with some mm -hmm. some modern changes that people are being weird about. But um, it doesn't look like they're they're fundamentally changing enough mm -hmm. like RE4 did. At least for me, maybe I'll change my mind when I see the, the mm -hmm. uncut like thing. But for me, as like looking at the eighty nine. 99 price tag in canada or 79 whatever in america 69 whatever it is um it's tough to swallow that um i don't know it just is i don't know i'm more of a resident evil guy than silent hill anyway Same. so <laughs> that didn't that didn't hit as hard mm -hmm. um yeah to be honest and this is kind of this is probably like a microcosm of the whole thing other outside of that and astrobot i don't even remember what else was shown uh, Monster Hunter Wilds was after Silent okay. Hill 2. And uh, obviously Silent Hill 2 has been, and I like, they showed it. I also had the previous state of play. So it's like, oh, this is a repeat showing. So that's yeah, why I'm like. Monster Hunter's uh, at the Game Awards. Mm, yeah. So it's been like, they've been, and yeah, Monster Hunter Wilds was announced at the Game Awards. This was the first time looking at gameplay because the other one was just kind of like the reveal that they were doing it. That looked really cool for people. I like Monster Hunter. I like Worlds. Rise, I have it. I haven't really played it as uh I don't know how to if I want to play Rise before this one, but uh, I like the idea of this. Uh, they're pitching Monster Hunter Wilds as a the first seamless Monster Hunter experience because usually Monster Hunter is like a very you have a world that's like segmented, so you kind of have to load into like okay, oh, going through this here, go through a loading screen to this other area as you pursue the monsters. This is gonna be like more like seamless. So I definitely want to see how things like them doing seamless stuff like Dragon's Dogma Two has been like over and post into this one because they all use the same engine so yeah we'll see if it i think uh I, I i could be convinced i think for that game for me specifically as somebody who's not a huge monster hunter fan it will really <laughs> depend on what's coming out around it mm -hmm. if Makes they sense. release that in like the fall around like big titles mm -hmm. or something anyway like it's it, it won't be my priority but that's why world hit for me there was nothing in january of like note when it came yeah. out so that i helps. think it was like that for a lot of people mm -hmm. Um, and then Astrobot. I think Astrobot looks fantastic. I already kind of briefly talked about it. I will say I thought I, I, I don't know. For me, I like Rescue Mission. I think <laughs> is one of the best 3D platformers ever. I think everyone it's says that yeah. ever. But I hear a lot of people saying how the first one was a tech demo because they didn't even know that that game exists, uh -huh. uh, yeah. which sucks. Um, so hopefully the, uh, this game ha captures what made mm -hmm. Rescue Mission yeah. so good, even though it's not VR. And, I've been and like, I yeah. it. I've been liking that people seeing the Astrobot game uh, being announced here has made them be like, wait, so this thing in Playroom is a game? So I've been seeing a lot of people actually play Playroom now because they basically yeah, have it. And they're basically good. now being like, holy crap, this is like an actual legit game. Like a, a guy from a Destiny clan that you joined, uh, that is my, my, my Destiny clan, uh, Guns. That's how it's called like. He was one of them that was like, wait, this is a game? I was like, yeah, play it. It's there. Play it. It's just not a demo. And then, and, and then 
He loved yeah. it. It's, uh... So Playroom does a good, really good stuff with the controller. But my favorite part was how much it dove into PlayStation nostalgia. Oh yes. And it looks like um, this game is taking the amazing 3D platform gameplay from Rescue Mission mm-hmm. and like doubling down on the PlayStation nostalgia and probably the dual sense of stuff mm-hmm. that I love. So this looks like a, a home run. Oh uh, yes. I think that this is the most sure fire, like the most sure bet you can make on a game being good. Yes. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Which, uh, like for this year, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And this one, that I'm, if you want to know that, just play Playroom, and you have a baseline idea of how good that thing feels to play. And that's yeah. you can see a lot of it in that trailer. <laughs> so. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that was a showcase. Mm-hmm. I kind of went on more or longer with that than I anticipated. But yeah, uh, but you know, what happens it, when that's you're... the thing. It had stuff. Uh, we didn't even talk about the Dynasty Warriors open world game that they announced. Origins uh, depends on if you're Is it open world. It, I didn't even catch yes, that so, because sure. the know. last one they did was open world, so they're gonna keep building on that. And now they have the technology to not make square blocks of millions of enemies. Like now they look like fully foreign armies. And yeah. Ragnarok appearing on PC was the other thing. So that piece of back. I think I like those. Yeah. I'm not a huge Muso player, mm-hmm. but I'm more interested when they are like riffing on other IP. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really connected I like the Zelda to ones. The Dynasty Wars. The, yeah, yeah, the Zelda like ones that. are aren't mine. Yeah, and the, the Persona Dragon, one, uh, the Dragon. Yeah, the Persona One, Strikers, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Dragon Quest. I think it's called Heroes. Yeah, Dragon Quest remember. Heroes One and Two. Yeah, those are good. But uh, but yeah, let's talk in. Let's talk showcases. We'll, yes. We're going to switch off the the tiny yeah, direct not, style to now. Not uh, state of play. Yes. not directs. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We're talking about showcases. All right, let's get into it. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do this a little bit differently. Um, typically, I've done this a lot in the past. I don't know, maybe not a lot, like three mm-hmm. times max, where we past. just kind of, uh, I tell you all the stuff that uh, I think might happen. You tell me stuff that you think might happen. Um, that's uh, that's old. That's that's not fun. We got, we got something a little bit different here. I have some questions. Mm-hmm. The questions uh, will end up leading to predictions but because they're questions it's a little bit different Mm -hmm. so it's better so for summer games fest i have five questions Mm -hmm. uh if you get the questions right or and i'm going to answer them too we're going to tally up the scores and we will see who wins i guess Mm -hmm. or who is the worst uh Uh, at predicting next week (laughs) on the on 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 your show Mm -hmm. Which uh, I will update the description of this uh, on podcast platforms and on YouTube. So I'll link to that when it comes out. But that will come out sometime next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Let's see how this goes. And and if you think this is worse than just talking about what we think could happen, let me know. We mm-hmm. won't do it again. I think I prefer let's this see. because it's like you could if, we, if if you left it at our own devices, we could go through so many million different tangents. So I like the more question approach because it'll, it at least the. Uh, can funnel the conversation into something. So, right. All right. So, this one is actually going to feel a little bit like what is your prediction, but it is mm-hmm. technically still a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Summer Games Fest. I want to go over the platform holders mm-hmm. first Sony, Nintendo, yes. and PlayStation. I want you, we'll start with Sony. I want you to tell me if you think they're going to show up in some way, mm-hmm. uh, either as a publisher or as a first party publisher. Um, and tell me if you think they're going to be there, and if they are, what game would it be? Yeah, I can say they're totally going to be there because they were at the splash image that was like, here are all the developers that are going to be here. So there was this PlayStation icon there, and they have also previously shown up. Uh, last year, uh, Brian Intahar, director of Spider Man 2, showed up to give us the release date because the uh, showcase only had a full 2023. Uh, Thing like a week before, which was the dumbest yep. thing. That, that would count, technically. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. announced Last of Us Factions. There. Yes, they announced also the Factions R.I.P. the year before. So uh, They have had some presence there, and I would say it is interesting that that same day, the pre-orders for Astro's, uh, Astrobot open up. So I can imagine maybe they do like an encore showing of Astrobot. Maybe the developer shows up there to kind of pimp it up, and they use it kind of as a marketing opportunity to, hey, um, we have that game. Pre-orders are up. That's the yeah. Xbox controller yeah. collector's edition. Exactly, and uh, and also maybe uh, it's at the the at the play dates that Jeff Keighley does is like, oh yeah, you go play, it, go try it. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say that considering also we have been hearing about this Horizon Lego game for a while, like the fact that it didn't show up at a state of play, I'm like, considering uh, the Horizon Forbidden West release date showed up at Gamescom. 
at a Jeff Keighley show. Maybe the Horizon related stuff maybe shows up here as a Sony related thing. So, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously that trending is Sony published. One though, I'll say if Astrobot shows up because of the Astro the time. Yeah, the the timing is too suspect. Is this the the, the priorities open the same day? And these are marketing shows. If we want to be, yeah. if we want to be clear, so yes, they will be there. That's... Yeah, I think they'll have a few stuff based on some. Like what is around it, but I'll go for Astrobot. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what I think will probably happen is like you know how sometimes they do those interludes between uh, yeah. reveals, <laughs> and it will just be like literally a 15, 30 second commercial for Astro. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I think they'll be there too. Obviously, <laughs> I I think it's uh, it's basically confirmed that they're going to be there based on what you had said about mm -hmm. the the the, 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 the publishers that are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the list. Um. I think that I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to say that there's going to be, uh, I think, Death Stranding 2, mm -hmm. a trailer. Uh, pretty much everything Kojima does goes through Keeley. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time we saw that, I think, was uh, Game Awards 2022. Uh, state of Play. The big or trailer. State, or yeah. Sorry, the but State before of Play. That was... The reveal was at Game Awards 2022. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And so that state of play was in January, end of 2020, 20, Okay. Yeah. January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that makes me feel like it's probably actually not going to be Death Stranding, but I'll stick with my guns. Mm -hmm. Death Stranding. I think we get a release. Uh... We already got a year. That is just. We got a year. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they would do a, a month and then a day at another mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said Death Stranding. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you still haven't locked it in. So if you want to like. Uh... Swerve, go for it. It's your show. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> cheat on the first question. I'm gonna stick with Death Stranding two mm -hmm. uh, release date. It's gonna be sooner than you think. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have a point because Kojima said that basically the development is done and they're polishing. He said it like yeah. a, a, a recently. So I don't think it's gonna be this year. Oh, no. But I think it's gonna be first half next year. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. Uh, next Nintendo. This were they on the poster? I don't remember. I don't think. No, no, they aren't. Yeah, they were not. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> and uh, what do you think? Yeah, I would say no because uh, they usually haven't shown up at summer games specifically because direct. They usually have their direct. Mm. So maybe they'll continue that streak, especially right now where. This was supposed to be the year of the Switch 2, and that got pushed. So it's like, yeah. uh, maybe they throw yeah. a, tra a random trailer for Luigi's Mansion 2 that's supposed to be out sometime this month. But other than I don't, I'm going to. Is it supposed to be this month? Yes. And that's the last announced thing from them. That's why the, the, the Nintendo Direct, uh, they, they need a new one because they got to show stuff uh, what's going to be for the Switch for the rest of this year. So, yeah. So I'll go with no. I'll, no. I'll go with no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm leaning towards no. I I feel like at the Keeley shows, the only thing that they really reveal mm -hmm. is DLC mm -hmm. uh, or some way to promote something they've already revealed or released. Or like a Zelda. Well, yeah, they did the DLC for Zelda at the Game Awards mm -hmm. for, for Breath yeah. of the Wild. I think they've said they're not doing DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. I can't think of any recent games that would warrant DLC except for maybe Pikmin 4. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's too soon for uh, Peach Showtime if that even gets DLC at all. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think those games are like made for that compared to like Zelda that's like built for like an expand like to be expanded. So yeah, but sometimes they do stuff like like in with the first DLC for Breath of the Wild wasn't really content like mm -hmm. new content. It was just like hard challenge. mode or <laughs> challenges challenge mode, or yeah. like that. Yeah, so. I, I think I'm just going to say, I think I already got the first one wrong, so I'm going to take the safe route here and say no. Yeah. Uh, what about Xbox? So, because they have, there's so much that they could show. And if there's something that I learned with Jeff Keighley is that if he's shown something before, usually that he will try to keep pimping that up. What was revealed at the Game Awards in 2020, Eric? Let me see if I, if, if you remember. And 2020 from Xbox specifically? Uh -huh. Yeah, at the, at the Game Awards. It was early in the show. Oh, at the Game Awards. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, uh, I, I want to test your memory. They revealed the Series X. 
that was in 2019. 2019. That was 2019. Oh, yeah. Okay, 2020. Uh, Perfect Dark. There we go. I feel Xbox will. Because we've been hearing that Perfect Dark is in better state than it's seen based on like some reports when people are like, no, that's in, on fire. Oh, no, it's not really on fire. Um, and to use kind of like that synergy of maybe they show something here that they're going to like build up somewhere like in the upcoming showcases later that week. I say this is where we see Perfect Dark again from Xbox with like a bigger meteor look or on, on Sunday because it's kind of time. And he, re- he, he did reveal Perfect Dark. In 2020, so he loves kind of like that, uh, that continuity mm-hmm. of what he reveals. So I'm gonna say Xbox will be here with Perfect Dark to tell us to show up on Sunday. Okay, I have two thoughts. Um, thought one is I think that it would make sense to kind of reshow something at the Game Awards that's already been revealed, so that it doesn't take up time at the showcase. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking something like Avowed or Indiana Jones. Yeah. Maybe get get a release date in, mm-hmm. in some, or something like that. <clears throat> the other thought I had, and this kind of ties into our next qu- my next question, mm-hmm. is the Summer Games Fest would be a great place to show a lot of people that probably wouldn't normally tune in on Sunday that Call of Duty is coming to Game Pass. And it's and it, and it, and Xbox owns that. Obviously, we know that the um, showcase, like post show or whatever, is like the Call of Duty Direct kind of thing. So it wouldn't really make a ton of sense to show much Call of Duty in the form of, in terms of like a trailer mm-hmm. uh, at the Xbox showcase. I think it could make sense to show some kind of trailer whether it's like a minute or something like that hype trailer maybe it shows a little bit of the campaign or something like that at summer games fest and said and and it will say something like tune in on sunday for the direct coming day one on game pass i think that's a great opportunity for them because there's going to be a lot of playstation fans Mm -hmm. watching summer games fest that might not know that it's coming yeah and it's still a multi-platform stuff even though it's owned by Microsoft, yeah. so it's still like, yeah, oh, yeah. and and also to kind of give you to throw you a bone, Modern Warfare Two and Modern Warfare Three were shown by Keeley also. So yeah, so there's like some precedent of maybe them instead of being like the full show this time is like, yeah, just as a reminder, there's something coming on Sunday. Here's like a little quick look, but go look for the full thing this coming Sunday. So Call of Duty could do that. Yeah. And also it's funny you mentioned that that it wouldn't make sense for like a trailer to show up at the showcase considering there's like a direct afterwards for Starfield. Uh, at the at last year's showcase in Xbox, they had a mini trailer for Starfield in the main showcase for Xbox, even though you know they had a direct immediately after. So it doesn't usually preclude them from doing like tiny bits to show like the big one afterwards. So yeah, something to keep in mind. That's just my my train of thought. Yeah. Um, I I I probably will go with like the. I guess it's hard. I'm not gonna pick Call of Duty because, mm-hmm. like, it's so hard to decide like which. You want game... some spice, right? You kind of want. You kind of want to make it spicy. Like in my head, I think that they're gonna show a game that's already been shown, but doesn't have a release date. That's coming mm-hmm. this year, like yeah. Ara, Indie, mm-hmm. Avowed, and uh, maybe, to be maybe fair, Diablo, like something like that. Yeah, I think that's. But it's hard to pick which one. Yeah. And the other option is just one game. I so hope I you I'm narrow it down. As uh, Jeff Keighley announced that he always sees Summer Games Fest as a, we're updating you on already announced stuff. He usually loves yeah. using Game Awards more for the new announcements. So, considering Xbox has a lot of games that have already been shown somewhere, that would fit in the, oh yeah, this has been announced previously. Let's use yeah. our show to give you more details. So. Yeah, I think it makes more sense. It's just hard to decide which one it would be, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, you know, so much. No, I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick one. Yeah, I'm go gonna, for it. Actually, I'm going to pick this one. They're going to show Flight Simulator 2024. It's kind of like a safe, a safe pick, yeah. Bonus, it's going to have some sort of tie to an IP of some kind. Yeah. Although there's not much left. Yeah. They already did Top Gun. It. And Dune. They already did Dune, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, Halo. And- and then when Crimson I think of Skies. what else is this, because I'm like, what else is there big movie-wise this year other than like the Ape movie that came out recently and uh, 
the Wolverine that that will show on Apple TV that's like World War II fighter planes. Maybe that could be that could be like even as niche Ooh. as that seems. So that could be like Combat a synergy. Flight simulator. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick flight simulator only because mm-hmm. the next question mm-hmm. is where will there be a tune in for more of X at the Xbox showcase? So are they going to reveal a game? Mm-hmm briefly or sort of uh, let's say like a cg trailer Mm -hmm. and then tune in like remember uh, a long time ago when ea play was a thing Mm -hmm. and they showed you a cinematic for anthem and then they said gameplay reveal at the xbox showcase Mm -hmm. something something like that do you think that could happen i think it can uh it it even happened last year not just uh, for xbox it happened for ubisoft prince of persia the lost crown was revealed at summer game fest first reveal and then elaborate it upon and be like, look forward more for you be forward. So, so this question kind of has wide open. And I feel just because Jeff Keighley is so in tune with like, what's the pop culture thing? I feel he may have something for Outlaws here as a, hey, we're going to be showing more of Outlaws in UB forward. And that would be like the thing because it's Star Wars. So I'm going to go for Star Wars Outlaws as the <coughs> tune ins for Monday. But here's a tease. For more stuff, even though it's already been revealed many times, it doesn't stop you up before. <laughs> so. I'm going to say yes, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say Dreadwolf. Dreadwolf? Yeah. Yeah. That has a chance to show up at Xbox. Dragon Age has uh, been. That, at, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh-huh. Like a tease at Summer Games Fest, show gameplay at Xbox. Mm hmm. I like that. For the gameplay reveal at Xbox. Yeah. If Jeff Grubb is to be believed, that's still a 2024 game. So, yeah. I do not believe Jeff Grubb very often. Yeah. (laughs) Though he gets them more right than wrong. It's so funny. (laughs) It's so funny. (laughs) uh... I remember him saying Metroid Prime was coming at the next direct like eight times. Uh, And then it happened as a shadow drop after he lost the bet where he had to cut his hair. He was so livid because it was like, that was a big. It, it being a shadow drop of term, I bet it feels like an even bigger F you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that would be my guess. I think that is uh, less likely than your guess, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, next question. What would be the biggest pop for those at home who mm-hmm. don't watch wrestling? No. A pop is something that's going to get the crowd the most hyped. And it's hard mm-hmm. to quantify that, so this might be yeah. tricky to award. Uh, but... Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's harder because it, it feels like the biggest pops of the year already happened. This bad, like, like kind of like uh, uh oh, wait, Xbox showcase. I happen. mean, that's no, that's why. Like, uh, you, you have Xbox, but I feel like that will be its like own separate pop because they're gonna be the ones uh, from mm-hmm. like a third party stuff. Uh, it feels like a lot of those pops already happened. So, and I feel like last year the biggest pop was the Rebirth trailer that gave their release date or kind of like the release window and the two disc announcement. So. Already, Kill already teased Kingdom Hearts fans that Kingdom Hearts 4 is not going to be in this thing. Square Enix is not in the panel of, of, of developers that are going to be here. They're like uh, trying to they're sort their... Right yeah, now. they're on cooldown right now. They're sorting their, 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 they're, they're sorting their house right now. Oof. I would say that the biggest pop, I have to go with Kojima just uh, because that's usually how it goes with them. So I'm going to say the biggest pop will be whatever other weird crap happens with that Stranding too. If the Troy Baker with a guitar scene is any indication from like the, from, from January's trailer. Yeah. Maybe another weird stuff at Achilles show could be another pop. So I'm going to go with that Stranding 2 will be the biggest pop for this. Okay. So then you're confirming that I'm right about Death Stranding 2 is going to be there for Sony. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Uh, I think I'm going to just double down on Dragon Age. Mm-hmm. I think Dreadwolf is going to be there, and I think that will be the biggest pop. And I think that could even be the ender, maybe. Yes, if uh, because the uh, there's been relations... Uh, not to forget that Dragon Age uh, Inquisition was the game of the year, the first ever Game Awards for Jeff Keighley. Dreadwolf so. was revealed at the Game Awards. Too. 2018. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, next question. I think you already answered it, mm-hmm. but where in the world is Kojima? Is he in LA? Is he going to be in a screen somewhere or is he just not involved? I feel he will be here. I feel he's going to fly in because I think and there's uh he's won't go, he, he will still, because he loves meeting actors. This is close to Hollywood. I feel he's mm-hmm. still, especially because he's, he's not only doing that Stranding 2, but he's also doing OD with Xbox. Yeah. I think he may, and also him already announcing that he's doing that Fissant stealth action game for PlayStation that is also going to have actors. 
I bet this is going to be kind of like a synergetic time to try to bring in and go meet some actors that are in Hollywood. So I'd say he will be in LA. Cool. Yeah. I also, uh, or I'll, I'll go get the green. I think he'll be there in, on a video screen. Video screen? Okay. There to be like, hey, this is my Death Stranding trailer. Mm-hmm. Eric was right. Yeah. And he did, he did show up in the video in 2021 when he revealed the PS5 version of Death Stranding 2. And he was yeah. talking about being like in a state of emergency over in Tokyo. It's the freaking funniest yeah. interview that I've ever seen of Jeff Keighley. Hey, Kojima, how are you doing? And he's speaking in, in Japanese. be like, I'm in the state of emergency in lockdown here in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest. It's the yeah. funniest to his moments. So, yeah. I like that. We're, yeah. we're like the opposite side. So we're like counter... We're we're encountering well, this one. If, if we all pick the same answer, I, yeah. I, I can't win. So mm-hmm. I had to go for the gold. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, last question, and then there's a bonus question. Last question, uh, official question: Will there be a movie or TV show trailer? And if so, which movie or TV show? It will be a movie trailer, and it'll be the Sonic the Hedgehog three trailer. Keely has had Idris Elba and uh, and uh, Keanu Reeves before in his show for Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. Those two actors are literally in the Sonic the Hedgehog three movie. Keanu Reeves was confirmed. Keanu's Shadow, yeah, Keanu's gonna be Shadow. Oh my! They God. have not, they they only teased the Sonic the Hedgehog three trailer at CinemaCon for people that visited, but they have not released that trailer yet. This feels like where he's gonna show, and he's previously shown the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog two. So I feel he's gonna do Sonic the Hedgehog three. That's a really good guess. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, that makes more sense, I think, than my guess, which was gonna be borderlands uh it they've could. already shown that stuff yeah but I, it could it's like that, that movie still needs pop and that would be like yeah. another place so. all right uh bonus question what would your dream reveal be for a non-first party reveal so nothing from sony nintendo mm-hmm. or xbox but dream reveal dream reveal let's skip the dragon age thing and show us more mass effect like uh the, because that was also revealed at the game wars 2020 when he revealed both dread wolf re-revealed dread wolf and and also the Mass Effect it's next or something like Mass Effect Rule Return. I don't know if you remember that. It was trailer. like a video though with like Liara. Like, L- uh, yeah, Liara in like yeah. a snow finding the N7, the, the N7 thing. So yeah, that could yeah, be kind of yeah. like, a, oh yeah, it's like uh, there's more. It's not just Dragon Age. It's like, we know you're missing Mass Effect. Here it is. That would be my pop because I miss Mass Effect. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, that's good. I would say uh, Resident Evil 9. Mm-hmm. I think Resident Evil 9 is uh, way further along than people mm-hmm. think. I feel like nobody is predicting that it's going to show up. Yeah. Um, there's been some pretty reputable, although obviously no leaker is completely mm-hmm. always accurate, but there's some pretty reputable, reputable leakers Yeah, that mm-hmm. have said that it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it makes sense with the timeline. Capcom is just literally on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Village, I think, was 2020. 2021. Two or twenty one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're three years out. Um they definitely wouldn't have had the full team working on the, no. the Rose DLC. So mm-hmm. I think it, it would make sense. I think that it, obviously I don't think it's coming out this year, but mm-hmm. I think it could be shown. Yeah. Um Resident Evils are always January to March, that period release. Uh, that, that, that's usually when they come out. And uh, Capcom has made it a a tradition that they work on many of these games kind of like in waves. That's how we got seven, two, and three, like in so in, in so close close proximity and also village and four so there's also yeah. an, and, and another one and now that uh, the state of play which usually they reveal a new resident evil something always at a playstation thing that's it resident evil 7 was at e3 2016 uh resident yeah. evil 2 at the 2018 e3 uh resident evil 3 at a state of play uh resident evil village at uh at, at the showcase that revealed a console in 2020 and resident evil 4 at the state of play from june 2022 so there was previous yeah. precedent for resident evil but because of when i was missing like a showcase for playstation that that could have theoretically been there and the fact that they still showed up there with uh monster honor so capcom always gives sony something this could be the one where it could show i'm interested yeah. to see like uh i would recommend you expand your bet to maybe include the code veronica zero remix because those are also kind of like in the thing <laughs> it's just uh well, this is my dream yeah. okay you can't you, this my dream is for nine yeah code veronica i mean they could fix it mm-hmm. in the uh remake but code veronica is busted because <laughs> steve both <laughs> me and my friend played that game in dreamcast like, 
Did you play it back in uh, back in Dreamcast or in PS2? Dreamcast. I feel like it was PS2. Okay, you you played well, the X version. Boss, where you like you literally need a certain amount of ammo for a grenade launcher, or you literally can't beat the boss. Mm -hmm. We didn't have enough, and so we couldn't beat the game, <laughs> yeah. and then just had to restart. And yeah. then I think we only rented it, so I had to anyway. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah, I, I want Resident Evil Nine. I think oh, yeah. that uh, back before, back when I thought this there was gonna be a PlayStation showcase, mm -hmm. I was very confident that Resident Evil Nine would be revealed there. Mm -hmm. Since it's not, uh, it was a state of play. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could have it could fall yeah. to, to Keeley. Yeah, it's like um, either showcase or state of plays. Uh, Capcom always shows up there, so that's always kind of like a safe bet. You can always like bet on something Capcom showing in in, in that side. They did confirm there's they're gonna have multiple announcements over here at the Summer Game Fest. The one clear announcement they mentioned was what Monster Hunter Wild. So yeah, you could you happened. could throw that RE9 in your in, in your head if you want. I was I was yeah. saying throw the other ones to at least secure the point. <laughs> be like <laughs> <if> they, <laughs> unless you want to be bold and just nine. Amazing. All right, let's roll in to your faves. The main event mm -hmm. of the evening, Xbox Showcase. Um. I had some fun making these questions. Let's mm -hmm. see how this goes. Question one. Which seemingly dormant previously announced game do you think returns or makes its grand mm -hmm. re-entry, re-reveal? Yeah. And these are going to be multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't have to think as much. Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be A, Perfect Dark, B, State of Decay 3, C, Everwild, D contraband or E Outer Worlds 2. I'll say Everwild. Everwild. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I would put Everwild as my like probably second, second? To least likely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it that feels like such vaporware, but it also feels like a rare now that Sea of Thieves is basically stylish. Sea of Thieves already put out on PlayStation, also doing great numbers over there. So that's basically taken care of when it comes to like engagement. That it's time for the other announced thing that they said back in 2021 when that thing restarted the development that 2024 was where they were aiming for. I would say maybe. I'll, but I'll, they also said they didn't know what the game was. Yeah. <laughs> so no, like, they said that in 2021. So hopefully they figure it out in three years. It's been three years since that. Yeah. So. Unless they found it out immediately <laughs> after saying that. I, I, I have my doubts. Yeah. I'll, I'll be wild uh, in this one, pun intended, and I say ever wild. Obviously, I could have gone easy with, with, with the perfect dark because I'm a, I threw it out there, but I kind of want to keep yeah. it spicier. So I'm not going to double down on like the perfect dark on Xbox. I, that, so I'll say ever wild. Yeah, I think, like, I think the, the success of Sea of Thieves on PS5 mm -hmm. might make them double down on it even more mm -hmm. and, and move more people off of Elder Wild. Anyway. We don't have to go down that route. I, <laughs> I actually am going to take the the layup, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say perfect, perfect dark. dark? Okay. I think State of Decay three is also kind of a layup too. But mm -hmm. for me, I think Perfect Dark is probably um, the second most important Xbox game that's currently in development. Mm -hmm. um, for a few reasons: one, it's a really important legacy IP. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, it's being reported that it has had a, a troubled development, and uh, everyone I mean, from yeah, all the big names from the initiative that were like the big names that they acquired from other studios left. So yeah, yeah. So there's that, uh, and that's not even like conjecture or mm -hmm. rumors. That's no. facts. Like yeah. the the people that founded the studio, almost I think all but seventy five percent left basically, and even the what the yeah. guy that was the reported game director, Drew Murray. Who was from Insomniac that left Insomniac to be here went back yeah. to Insomniac. Now so. it's the guy from uh, uh, Crystal Dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, Darren Gallagher. That part of it. Mm -hmm. This is a studio, okay, that Microsoft built from the ground up. Nothing. Yeah. This they was the started with the first brick in the foundation. Mm -hmm. This is something that Phil. This is his passion project. He when they first started acquiring mm -hmm. studios. Yeah. And they announced playground and ninja theory and, and the the capstone that laps mm -hmm. like the the one more thing to that the big thing to that was, was the initiative mm -hmm. it's literally called the initiative mm -hmm. so you got a legacy ip from a studio that hasn't shown anything but but yeah. bad yeah. press basically 
it's something that I think is it, it, if it's not here, mm-hmm. then I worry about the game and I worry about that studio. Yeah, um, the because... initiative feels like the flashpoint that gives so many Xbox haters the ammo for that they don't know how to manage studios since the one that they built from the ground up has doesn't yeah. have anything to show so it is imperative for them to show even though everyone knows very publicly that crystal dynamics was brought in to help so, mm-hmm. so it's, it's still something that they need to get out because it's like yeah. they need to prove that it's like even despite all the struggles like the game still came out and maybe comes out awesome because crystal dynamics is great outside of Avengers yeah. <laughs> and the Avengers yeah, was good like a, uh, yeah <laughs> this might be a hot take but I don't think that I don't think you see any more Redfall situations mm-hmm. where games no. come out undercooked. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some nuance to what's happening with uh, the initiative. I think they tried a new approach mm-hmm. uh, to just how studios like work, mm-hmm. like like without getting too far in in the weeds. Like their comp- their corporate structure and how they kind of tackled game development was like kind of this new. Uh, way of doing things where you had um, rapid prototyping and just different approaches that were like like non-traditional ways to make games Mm -hmm. and i think that is kind of where the whole like quadruple a or Mm -hmm. like where the name the initiative comes from because they were kind of experimenting and obviously that didn't work and Mm -hmm. i think that they kind of uh returned to a more traditional development style Mm -hmm. so i think a lot of the issues that that studio has had is more to do with them taking a risk taking or experimenting with Mm -hmm. how to do things and it just simply not working than it does for anyone that works there or manages them for any incompetence or anything Mm -hmm. like that yeah but i do get the sentiment and i do hear that a lot Mm -hmm. but i do think it's an important game important franchise an important studio and and it's really important like for xbox to to showcase that so Mm -hmm. i think that's that's my pick anyway. Yeah, I'm of the mind that they just need as many wins as possible because that they are always so that they're always swimming against the current. Everyone is always like, they need a nothing win, you know, like I just. When uh, will they get a win? Uh, so despite them getting many wins before that, so it's like uh, what I what I always found about the initiative is that they brought so many like top talent from so many of the different studios that reminds me of a sports team that brings like the star players from different teams to put them all playing together yeah. that probably didn't kind of like the old jive because it was a lot of egos maybe that happened who knows that's kind of how it seems awesome. because it's like it's all of them that left like the big talent that made waves when they said that they were all going into the initiative all of them then left so <clears throat> right so that's why i'm like yeah i just want to see like what it is is it a shooter is it like is, is it an fps like all perfect dark used to be did they do something different i'm just i just want to see what it is so but I also want to see whatever wild is because I love that art style of ever wild so much, and I, w- I just want to see like what rare does it because I love cool. rare. Rare was is, was my favorite SNES era Nintendo uh, developer with Donkey Kong, so I always have a soft oh, spot definitely. for him. So yeah, so I do ever wild. You said uh, perfect dark. Lock it in. Yeah, lock it in. All right. Question two, similar style. Which seemingly dormant first party studio will mm-hmm. make its return? Mm-hmm. So these are studios that don't have a game that's that's at least officially announced mm-hmm. yet. Um, so I put uh, three, four, three industries, and I'm gonna I, I I put like obviously we know they are making Halo Infinite, mm-hmm. but uh, when I say three, four, three industries, I'm talking about them as kind of. Uh, shepherds of the halo ip Mm -hmm. so i'm more so talking about halo in general we don't know the future of that franchise in terms of like actually seeing a title like we obviously know the franchise is not dead Mm -hmm. i'm not trying to be a halo doomer yeah but we don't know where the next story is coming from Mm -hmm. or where the next game yeah we just know that infinite is in multiplayer live support right now so it's like they're like building it up they're keeping it up uh they're supporting the multiplayer side but everything else about infinite is kind of like that's basically winding down so it makes sense yeah so, yeah, as well as we don't know of, of any officially announced other Halo games that 343 would be like like 343 was involved with the with like Halo Wars 2 for example. Mm-hmm. So we don't we don't have any Halo Wars 2s that are mm-hmm. officially announced or of the like I, obviously like there's a certain affinity thing mm-hmm. and yada yada I but I anyway. Halo Wars 3. Man, that's the kind of yeah. topic for I love it. Yeah. I just give me a freaking Sony style third person mm-hmm. stealth action game where you play as a Sangheili elite. Mm, Give me that. That'd be cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, but that's A. B, uh, Double Fine. Mm-hmm. 
C, uh, Zenimax Online, same idea. We all, we mm-hmm. obviously know that they're making Elder Scrolls, yeah. but we also know they have another team. Uh, and I have Blizzard Team One. So mm-hmm. Blizzard Blizzard is similar to Square Enix, where they have very uncreative mm-hmm. ways of naming their teams. Yeah, because Team Two yeah. is Diablo, right? I think. Uh, or is it I Team Three? Team Two is WoW. Oh, okay. Um, I think Team <clears throat> Three is Diablo. I think Team Four is uh, Overwatch, and Five is Hearthstone. One is like mm-hmm. Warcraft, RTS, mm-hmm. uh, Starcraft, uh, Heroes of the Storm, stuff like so they've that. They've been dormant, and this is Team uh, One. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, I mean, they had rework of Reforged, Starcraft Remastered. Mm-hmm. They still make content. I think Team One's pretty small, mm-hmm. but I'm more or less using that as kind of a mask to say, will Blizzard show something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or ports. Yeah. Anyway. That makes uh, sense. Those are the options. Yeah. I would say I would go B, Double Fine. Double Fine. Yes. Because it feels like it's been long enough now since Psychonauts 2. I feel it's time mm-hmm. to see like what the next like, like what the next step for double fine is i know double fine was also kind of looked at in the same kind of like eyes of peril after what happened with tango it's similar to like how people started looking at ninja theory with eyes of peril of like oh yeah these are the people that do like more smaller creative stuff and right now that the isaron is over uh it's over at microsoft where it's like the the the, the penny the penny pinchers the the bean counters are kind of <laughs> like more uh they're kind of like a more, more in tune of like what's happening, what can re- re- uh, generate revenue. Like, what does it say about like the smaller teams that they have acquired over the years? And I feel like Double Fine, uh, it's time for them to see like how they can prove to Microsoft be like, hey, yeah, it's like it was not just Psychonauts 2 that you help finish because we kickstarted it first. Uh, I want to see, yeah, I want to see maybe a Psychonauts 3. Psychonauts 2 was amazing. So I'll say, yep. I say Double Fine, it's time for them to show up. So. They are my pick. Yeah, I think I think Double Fine makes sense. Um, I, I don't know if it'd be Psychonauts three, but I know I don't know if you've watched Psych Odyssey. Um, mm-hmm. If you haven't, it's it's excellent. It's probably the best documentary kind of, uh, documentary mm-hmm. you could ever watch if you ever were curious about how games that really are made. Yeah, the um, Matt Booty what part of that documentary is pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a, that the the scene in that documentary for Matt Booty like that arose during yeah. the. The, they're doing the Xbox Nightmare PR fiasco of those closures was like, it was like, it's, yeah. it's wild that they let that still exist and that it wasn't like scrubbed. So, yeah, well, that's part of the like, they the film crew has full access. Uh, there's more stuff, like, there's a really like, uh, I, I promise I, I'm not trying to always talk about how I, I am a software developer, but mm-hmm. there was a scene where they were talking about crunch mm-hmm. and there was, there was a like, they do. Uh, they're a small team, so they do like I don't know how often it is. It feels like it's like weekly, but they do mm-hmm. like team kind of scrums, mm-hmm. and they kind of just like vent stuff as a team in person, mm-hmm. like in a big group, not like through emails or Slack channels or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And there's some emotional conversations that happen around like workflow, and, so, and it's very, very interesting stuff. If you're if you're a software developer or you're mm-hmm. just a project in in a uh, an industry that's project oriented, but anyway, the reason why I bring that up is because they have something called uh, Amnesia Fortnite, which is an internal um, kind of program that they run at Double Fine, where they it's essentially a game jam, mm-hmm. but. Uh, the winners of the game jams uh, have like an opportunity in some cases to have the games actually be made. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the people that kind of create the game from the game jam have some ownership over it. And that was a contentious point with the Matt Booty thing. Cause mm-hmm. they, I brought that up and he's like, nah, if you make something, we own it. Mm-hmm. I own it. Yeah. Not you. Like that was kind of anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, one of the games that they shown there was called kiln and that won the amnesia Fortnite spoilers mm-hmm. for that episode. But uh, that was kind of a neat looking game that I think there was rumors that it might get turned into something. Um, so that could show up. Mm-hmm. My guess, though, is not going to be Double Fine because you picked Double Fine. Yeah, it was going to be Double Fine, but then you <laughs> picked it. So I'm going to go with Zen- Zenimax Online. Mm-hmm. I've been hearing about this other team there for a very long time. Years. Just got uh, stacked up Mickey... now when they like yeah. folded the the mold. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think they, they, they kind of like folded in, into that one, too. So makes sense. Yeah. There has been uh, a lot of rumors about this MMO being based on a established IP. Mm-hmm. I think the star. I think it was Star Wars mm-hmm. that I heard, um, uh, specifically like Mandalorian. Mandalorian era. Oh, that, yeah, I remember hearing those rumors. 
when it was like a, yeah. a Mando game from Bethesda. Yeah, so I think uh, I think it's more likely that Double Fine shows up, but I think that Zenimax would be more likely than mm -hmm. uh, 343, yeah. sadly, and definitely <clears throat> more likely than Blizzard. So uh, my choice would be Zenimax. Mm -hmm. I think they reveal their new IP. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's going to be hard to tell what it is. I mm -hmm. think it will be a CG re reveal and you really will have more questions than answers. Yeah. But I think that they show up. Yeah. The beauty of them owning so damn much is that the likelihood of us, bo of uh, both of us getting points <laughs> in this Xbox showcase is kind of like relatively high because they have so much. So, so it makes sense. Yeah, that's, isn't it? It's strange. They have, mm -hmm. they have, uh, and I know I don't always like comparing stuff to Sony, but they have more studios. Yeah. It, that's fact. It's like Xbox owns more, especially post ADK. Yeah. So and they have less studios that we don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sony like, has less studios and more we, of them. Uh, we don't know no, what's like, coming from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and that's been like weird. that's been this generation. Xbox has been like the talking parrot. So it's like we yeah. know so much about it. That's why like the face plants feel sting more because you know about it, while the other guy is like so quiet that even if it's clear they have stumbles. It's like it's very clear. It's just because they remain so damn quiet, and because they have the market position like in their favor, it's like they're able to kind of soften the blows of any screw ups. So with that, with Xbox, exactly. it's like because they're constantly like swimming against the current. Like every screw up feels like now the wave kind of pushed them back again. So it's like a, that it is. It, it always feels like they're always trying to like like swim up to get some air because they're always feeling like drowning against like all so much like uh, pent up negativity that's just like inherent to how. The chips have fallen. So exactly. So yeah, so uh, yeah. So that would be my guess. Would be Zenimax. Uh, and next also question. parenthesis, isn't it? Would it be weird that it would, this would be like third showcase in a row if three four three shows up with nothing? That would be like so wild. Be like uh, <laughs> that is like uh, because they were obviously there in twenty twenty one, but then in like twenty twenty two, nothing. Twenty twenty three, nothing. Is like twenty twenty four. That happens again. It'd be like damn. <laughs> So, there might be something. Uh, there might be something uh, later on mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom of this list where we, yeah. we may revisit three, four, three. Cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, next question is a little bit more exciting uh, than three, four, three right now. Mm -hmm. Will we see a hardware announcement, and what would it be? I say yes, and it's gonna be a handheld. It's gonna be a handheld because Phil doesn't just say stuff. Just because in his many interviews, every time that you have to like analyze something, there's always like a double meaning towards that. Sarah Bond mentioned in the legendary old super anticipated podcast that was a is Xbox dying or not that happened earlier this year that they're <laughs> working update. the business update that uh, they were working on more mm -hmm. hardware. So and right now with the boon that has been happening with actually dedicated handhelds uh, post like Steam Deck succeeding and now getting the Rock mm -hmm. Alley and all that uh, mm -hmm. and the idea that the specs could be like if they could retractively make like a Series S in handheld mode, these could mm -hmm. be like the thing as as they keep attempting to try to penetrate the uh, the Japanese market in a, at a market that right now is like so all in on portable more than consoles yeah. that this would feel like the way that they could finally get there, especially since now they have partnerships with Sega for Persona and all of that, and those are like at least like those. Games are not escaping the platform anymore, and they have Metaphor, uh, the, the marketing deal for Metaphor for later this year. What better mm -hmm. way to get into the Japanese uh, market, especially right now after you close your only developer that was in Japan, that try to re-enter a market with like a device that could appeal that market. So I'd say native handle, not streaming, but one that basically works as a digital series S in your handle. That's my bet. Yep, and that would be exactly what... I would have said if I went first as well, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> I didn't. So I, I think the uh, outside of a handheld, uh, which I think makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Like I, there are some curious decisions they made with how they architected um, this. I don't know. Is that a word? Architect? Yeah. Or how? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How how the Series S was put together, uh, specifically in terms of power delivery, mm -hmm. that is a little bit like strange for a console but makes sense mm -hmm. for a portable mm -hmm. and if the fabrication is kind of like already there and like the like the architecture is already there and it can be shrunken into a handheld form factor mm -hmm. um i think that kind of makes sense to kind of mirror that uh because it also sucks too if you have three SKUs for mm -hmm. developers to hit 
instead of two. Like two's already been complained about. Yeah. If they added a third that was like a different spec than a Series S, mm -hmm. that would that would make it even worse as yeah. well. That's why but I yeah, put I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's why I put the, the the caveat of being like take the Series S experience that's already there and just like make mm -hmm. it portable. It's like since that's already a 1080p machine, 1080p screen, like 1080p in a seven H eight inch screen, perfect. Let's just say, let's just call it. It's like, yeah. you don't need more and, for that. <laughs> so. And one thing that is, is interesting, really interesting. I don't know if you've been paying attention to uh, Immortals of Avium and FSR. FSR. Yeah, FSR 3 recently. So, yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting about FSR 3 is it's awesome. Like mm -hmm. frame generation, it works really well on Series X and PS5. Mm -hmm. The game ran between like 40 and 60. Yeah. And now it's running between like 70 and 90. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Because the they already were using upscaling, mm -hmm. I think the 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 target render the for seven series I don't know for series, series S was four hundred eighty uh, something p. Yeah, so yeah, so for series X and and PS five mm -hmm. it was like nine hundred something p. Seven twenty p actually per yeah it was seven twenty p per digital foundry because they had all the Unreal Engine five like bells and whistles that they brought down like the render resolution and they tried to upscale it with, with yeah, whatever uh, fsr maybe maybe i misheard mm -hmm. it but i thought i just watched it and i thought it said not anyway mm -hmm. it was low mm -hmm. uh and series s was way lower yeah it was like 400 something yeah 486 p yeah and then it was, up, then mm -hmm. it was up, up res mm -hmm. but uh it, what's interesting is when you apply frame generation to that because the target render mm -hmm. resolution is so low the frame generation is able to like work well, mm -hmm. a lot better like I, I, they do a better job of explaining i won't get into all the details here mm -hmm. but um the end result is that the Series S can play Immortals of Avium mm -hmm. at 1080p, yeah. 120. Yeah, because it's, uh, because the resolution is like so low, so there's like so little overhead for them to like uh, get get looks, better performance. It doesn't look like that bad, mm -hmm. especially, and that's on a, a TV. If it was on an eight inch screen, it would look almost identical. Mm -hmm. um, so you could get if that starts becoming uh, something that's very easy to integrate in any in any game, mm -hmm. then you could get some serious performance um, out of that handle. But anyway, my guess, uh, I think the second most likely thing would be the adorably all digital mm -hmm. bullshit. But yeah. I am not gonna even speak that yeah. <laughs> into existence. Um, yeah. If they do, okay, here's a preference. If they do announce that mm -hmm. and an external disk drive, I will not be upset. Mm -hmm. I will be yeah. Okay. There is but, uh, there was a pattern that they were uh, looking into like an external disk drive to put it with a USB cable. I remember seeing that pattern because uh, when I had a Series S, when I bought mine in 2022, it was around the time that I saw that they were patenting that. So I was like, hmm, see, there's a pattern for this. Maybe they'll eventually do those discs because there's so many games from back and pad that simply cannot be played on Series S because they're only disc yeah. only. So that I bought it on the hope and I already have a Series X now with a disk drive. So no problem there, but maybe, who knows? And I don't know if you saw it, but today they announced that uh, Kena Bridge of Spirits yeah. coming to Xbox and they showed like the pre-orders or whatever. And the box and the case art. is different. Yeah, and the, the case is different. So I'm like, hmm. So why update the case? I mean, the other the flip side of that is uh, I could show you behind me. They have like 18 different mm -hmm. case designs. Like it's crazy how different how much they just don't care mm. about consistency yeah. with that <laughs> yeah uh, the new yeah, one so the, the new one looks slick with just kind of like the little thing there with like more overhead for the art but it will depend on how people use it so. yeah i think the i think this is like such a silly conversation that most people will give a flying <laughs> like they won't care about it at all i think the front of the xbox case mm. is way better than the front of the playstation case mm. but the xbox case is yeah thinner uh -huh. and so the spine uh doesn't have enough room to to really showcase any of like the cool fonts that mm -hmm. some titles have and they force the spines to be gray which i don't like so there's like give and take with both but uh yeah i think the new case design is pretty good mm -hmm. i don't like the font they use for the series x and series s mm -hmm. like logo on the top right i think that hopefully that's just like a rough photoshop and hopefully they fix that mm -hmm. but i do like that case but anyway no like literally almost nobody cares about that except for me yeah <laughs> but anyway back to my uh, prediction i think that they're going to show the uh that controller the the one with the uh uh the the better um what do you call it better haptics I, I, haptics mm -hmm. that's what i was, yeah. was going to say like dual sense features but yeah the haptics i think that they show that and um yeah i think that's what i'll say mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Just don't, just please just don't, don't upgrade the series X. Even if it's like slightly, if it's like, Oh, we have better Bluetooth support mm -hmm. or, Oh, it has Wi-Fi, like the uh, upgraded Wi-Fi. Like even if it's something small like that, if it's better in any way mm -hmm. and doesn't have a disk drive, I will be mad. Yeah. And it will, it will seriously harm my overall reaction to yeah. the show. I don't know if this is, if, if I don't know if this is going to be like shown in video form, but just behind you, you have like such a massive like 360 and Xbox like collection there. So, <laughs> so it's like uh, that would hurt you specifically there because it's like yeah, it, it would tell you their intent. Because even though like with Sony, it's like yes, the Slims now, the the the, the this is like detachable, but they're making an effort of making those, and you can buy them to replace those in in case one of those like mess up yep. with like the new model. So it's like they still make a lot of money in physical based on like the financials It's like uh they they have a, a huge digital pie but at least there is the, the the physical market still responds to them not to mention nintendo that physical is like the majority of their sales still so mm -hmm. so it's like they should still like even with the bad news we heard that they they closed their in uh their in-house like uh disc development remember when the layoffs happened and uh, in early january that part of the layoffs kind of like killed that uh their disc manufacturing yeah. so i think yeah, I've looked into that a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I think that that is more of bad messaging mm -hmm. from Xbox. Yes, the, that did close, mm -hmm. but uh, that was not the only place where that happened mm -hmm. within Microsoft. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, they're still printing discs, mm -hmm. and they just updated the box art yeah. design. That so tells everything that they're not people. ready to give up from that. So. Yeah. So, that's the thing. But anyway, we're going to move on to a, a new section. Mm -hmm. That I like to call I like uh, these. more probable mm -hmm. than not. Yeah. Sponsored by the New England Patriots. <laughs> uh, some people yeah. might get that. Mm -hmm. So there's three questions here. Mm -hmm. More probable than not. Yeah. Question one. Obviously, okay, I'll explain it, but I think it's mm -hmm. pretty obvious. Yes. I'm going to give you two things, mm -hmm. and you have to tell me which one is more likely. Yeah. And I have I'll have my to answer. argue for, yeah, for I have a my, different one. I have my answer. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So more probable than not, will we see. Uh, back compat return with uh, new ABK titles added to this to either to Game Pass or mm -hmm. uh, even if it's just straight up sale, just back compat team mm -hmm. comes back from the dead. And uh, if you have the disc already, it will just work if you put it in a la, uh, 50 cent blood in the sand. Was that Activision? Uh, that was uh, no, that was randomly that was one of the final batch from that November 15, 2021. Uh, Back on Paddleist, they made 50. Oh, yeah. I was thinking Bulletproof. So oh, yeah. Yeah, thinking, yeah, 50 cent Bulletproof. I have blood in the stand. Yeah. That's worth Yeah, that's anyway. worth a lot now, especially because that works now on Xbox, but you need the disc. There's no digital version for that one. So Yeah, because of the, the, yeah. the licensing. So will, will that team come back? Uh, I guess, mm -hmm. I mean, I I think the catalyst for them coming back would probably be ABK. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they do come back and they don't port ABK games, I'll still give you a point. Yeah. Um, or... Will we see a first party remaster or remake announced? Yeah. So something that's an Xbox owned IP that released uh I'll I'll qual quantify this. I'll make up some rules on the spot. Marcus so, and, Phoenix and, collection, and, let's say, like the rumor of Marcus what that count here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my criteria is it has to be an IP that Xbox now owns, which includes Bethesda ABK, mm -hmm. and it has to have been originally released on the three sixty or Late, like later, mm -hmm. earlier, yeah, or even OG Xbox. Who knows? They say those yeah, are 360, yeah. 360 back, mm -hmm. so 360 or OG, mm -hmm. something from that that is a franchise or PC. It might have been something that was PC only, mm -hmm. I would count that too. But, uh, yeah, yeah, more probable than not, yes, more probable, option a yeah. I go, option B. I'm going with option A because I want to feel spicy. There is a shit ton of games from the three from the Activision catalog and the 360 era that including very good Spider-Man games. Yes, exactly. Like at a time where like Marvel has been like straight up ignoring the Xbox because of the deal that Sony made to get the Insomniac Spider-Man games made. Obviously, Xbox has gotten Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers, and uh Midnight Sun still, but still that those are kind of like more those and Indiana Jones exclusive. Yeah. Then that's all, and that's separate with the Disney. But just Marvel, Marvel is like a, to uh, in, in inject the library into so many Marvel games. It's not just Spider Man because I would love for Spider Man Shadows. Yeah, yeah I, I, like oh man, X Men Legends one and two. Can you imagine if those could come back? 
But I, uh, I love that. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, even though they did an Xbox One and PS4 version of those that then got delisted for some for XYZ reasons. Uh, I, I have the PS4 version, thankfully, for that. So I, I'm taking care for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2. But it, it feels like even games like X-Men Origins Wolverine, the Transformers games. Oh, yeah. yeah, like t- t- Transformers, uh, War, War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron. Though it, it does could also come back. Like... I would feel, I feel this this would be like ABK would be the reason for them that to redo the 360 backwards compatibility thing, especially because Sarah Bond said that she has the team in place for forward compatibility for whatever else they do. So it's like mm-hmm. that's still technically the same team, and that was formed before they confirmed ABK. So yeah, I feel like this could I be like a massive uh, pop. I think Activision made a God of War esque Captain America game. Uh, that, well was Sega. that was Sega. Oh, Sega, yeah. dang. Yeah. Okay. Captain America first event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Wolverine okay, well, is yeah, Wolverine the... is a God of War style game, uh, like hack and slash game. Uh, dude, the helicopter yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> okay, if they announce that, if they announce X Men Origin Wolverine, you know, I will be instantly going on eBay and buying a copy. Yeah. Because they're already kind of expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have my PS3 uh, copy. <laughs> I bought the Indiana Jones uh, for Xbox One. Yeah, the yeah, as soon one. As that, yeah, as soon as they bought uh, Zenimax and the other one was announced. Mm-hmm. That, by the way, that game has the... This is like a deep cut, but that game has the best manual, I think. Mm, I remember. Yeah, it's thick. Yeah. I remember that thing. Yeah, I bought. And I remember like, buying it. It's like all canon. Like mm-hmm. the way that like they're like the controls are explained like in universe as if it's like an ancient mm-hmm. relic. Yeah, like his, yeah, like like his uh, man, like his uh, uh, journal. Yeah, yeah. I I exactly. love them first too. I really enjoy it. the combat is so hilarious because like it's in the end just doing like drop kicks and all that. So the animation yeah. is like funny. I have that. I got it digitally. Uh, they got they gave it for free on Xbox Live one day. So that's how I got it. Yeah, I have so. that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to for uh, have the disc copy, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna pick uh, obviously the other, the mm-hmm. latter, the for, whatever, the other option. Um, Yours feels like a layup and, based on the real rumors that we've been hearing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think like Oblivion remake, remaster, Fallout or three. Fallout Three mm-hmm. remake, remaster. I think those are probably the two likeliest mm-hmm. things. Um, I. Th- uh, yeah, where's there, where there's I'll smoke, go. there's fire. Gears of War Six coming back in the showcase, and then them probably doing uh, the Mar- the long rumor Marcus Phoenix collection that finally brings the trilogy outside of four or five finally to PC because those games are only on three sixty back compat. That could be too. So yeah, there's a lot of smoke there for there not to be a fire. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I just don't see how they could do that. Mm-hmm in the same way as MCC mm-hmm. and still make, unless that's why gear six took so long and mm-hmm. that kind of makes sense. Um, yes. I, personally, I would rather see a Marcus Phoenix collection than follow three remaster or oblivion remaster. Same. Although oblivion remastered would be, I really, love gears. Really I, I, I personally love gears of war more than the Bethesda RPGs. It's, like, it's just more my kind of game. I love those, like the meathead shooter. That, like I love that. I really stuff. like Oblivion. I really, I do. I agree. Mm-hmm. But I really. Like I mean, I Oblivion. like those too. I just for me, like for my personal tilt, to be like, oh man, I would love for like an. Uh, I love when they did the Ultimate Edition for Gears of War One back in the Xbox One in 2015. Uh, and they shadow dropped the beta too. Mm-hmm. That was sick. Yeah. So it's like I was always hoping that was gonna be the the okay. They're giving us Ultimate Edition of Gears One. Can't wait for Gears Two and Three. But then. The thing they ended up doing was just to put them in back compat and then do the Xbox One X uh, upres and eventually FPS boost. So those games look beautiful already, but different pop from play the 360 version to play a new one on the new engine. Who knows? Like because yeah. I'm expecting great things from the Coalition for when it comes to UE5. Well, like whatever we saw with Hellblade 2 is like I'm expecting like with a Coalition to at least meet in like a bigger like a bigger game like. Like I feel they could get comparably close in detail and like a more much more feature game because they know how mm-hmm. to use Unreal Engine. So yeah, it's a slippery slope. I think that I th- the the key difference is I don't think that the new Gears would use photogrammetry and mm-hmm. I don't think that it would use as much mocap, mm-hmm. um, which is really what makes Hellblade just so beautiful. Hellblade mm-hmm. stand out mm-hmm. because Hellblade like when you're walking like 
on in a quarry in Hellblade 2. That's a real quarry mm-hmm. that they took pictures of and put in the game engine. Yeah. And and like Sarah or wherever Gears takes place is mm-hmm. going to be a completely made up yeah. anyway. But it's still, I think it will be yeah. like a showpiece because when you factor in what it will look like and mm-hmm. the performance, I think it will be because yeah. the Matrix demo was mm-hmm. insane. Exactly. Yeah. That, I, yeah. That, that, that's what I think would be yeah. the. And I feel kind of like because Ninja Theory doing what they did was them pushing above their weight because they were like a smaller team. Like uh, Coalition has a lot of devs that had worked in Gears before, and they have been known as people that really know and push UE5. Look at Gears yeah, 5. They so. helped Hellblade. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I read that. Yeah. So that's why I'm like. I have good like I have good expectations at least for what we can get visually from like a gear six and it's been a while. It it is funny though as soon as soon as they lost uh, Roth Ferguson when he went over to Diablo like he would he, he was able to put out two games like in, on time fully featured in like three years he he out we're going for five now <laughs> since the last gears so yeah mm-hmm. they also lost I think their PvP combat mm-hmm. lead designer yeah. And and uh, yeah, so I mean, if 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 they reveal Marcus Phoenix collection, and it's like a shadow drop or it comes out this year, mm-hmm. that would explain why Gear Six has taken so long. Mm-hmm. I think that if they don't reveal that, and they just reveal Gear reveal Gear Six, and it's twenty twenty five, late twenty twenty five, or or further out, then I think that those two people and other things really COVID screwed up there that, that, that really cycle there. Up. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think that will kind of tell us and also anyway. i think we heard that there was like a game canceled also within the coalition i think they were doing also something different i remember reading so i heard rumors about uh-huh. uh a mandalorian game as well mm-hmm. i remember tweeting yeah. something about that <laughs> and then the coalition responding to me and be like no we're not doing yeah. that <laughs> at least you heard of it straight from the horse's mouth but there was a cancellation of some sort that happened there at the coalition that i do remember that was like widely reported so it's time it's just a it's, it's been five years four if we count high busters the dlc that was so great that everyone forgot about yeah so it was really good mm-hmm. but it was just it was just, yeah it was short but it was good and it wouldn't have taken the whole team i don't think mm-hmm. to, to make that um but what do i know yeah but anyway back on pack mine question. yours is the remasters let's see yes and you're saying Marvel yeah. game? Just like I'm the Activision. Saying... Yeah, just the Activision. Uh, because there's like, I would like the, the biggest shock would be that, that it's like they're able to work out the Marvel deals to bring all of those back. So, See, I would say Singularity would probably be <sighs> Singularity likely. So but I have the PS3 version of that too. And I'm like, I would love for that to. Dude, all, I mean, I hate to be that, the, the X-Bot. But it's all of those games were better. better. Yeah, we're better on PC. Xbox. I know. <laughs> all of them. And all of them today, yeah. the back and pack games run like back then, mm-hmm. they ran better. Yeah. It was and like even back then, they had like stream tearing and all that, which is basically eliminated from the back and pat, what they've done with the of well, clean, of cleaning yeah, all that. If they brought back and pat, back and pat back, mm-hmm. it wouldn't just be raw mm-hmm. back and pat. They would, would have to do that. Enhanced. Yes. It would be doubling the frame rates. It will be quadrupling the resolution, like adding auto HDR. Mm-hmm. It would be, they would be souped up. So that would be the best place to play for sure. Um, outside of PC, but yeah. By the way, by the uh, way, by the way, uh, breaking news, uh, like a Dragon Jakusa TV series coming on October 24 on Amazon Prime. <laughs> is it in Japanese? I don't know. <laughs> it is like, uh, they... did you say 2024? Yeah, October 24 for this year. <laughs> Have you have you played like like a dragon? Uh, yeah, I played it. I I played the original one. I bought uh, Infinite Wealth, but I promised that I was gonna play uh, the entirety of the first one before I did Infinite Wealth. That so, game's so good. Yeah, it look. <laughs> so it's like so that's Kiryu, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay, so okay, mm-hmm. it's probably not uh, Ichiban's mm-hmm. story then. Yeah, probably. It, yeah. starting at like zero. Mm-hmm. But still, yeah. So it's so funny. That yeah, that's so weird. random. <laughs> but uh. Well, I mean, I'm not going to go too far into this tangent, but Netflix mm-hmm. makes a lot of money mm-hmm. with foreign language content. Yeah. I wonder if Amazon's um, going to go the extra the extra mile making it a foreign language. So, Well, this, I, I can't remember the exact figures, but I, I had access to a document that showed kind of the uh, – obviously, the, the people that are native – their native tongue is the language the show is in. Obviously, they have a, a – like that demographic is a high – um, volume for for those shows but there's a lot of people that watch with subs mm. 
because the content's high production value and it's mm. good content. So yeah. I think it makes sense, uh, especially if it's in, in Japanese. There's a lot of Japanese people out there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. that's awesome. Yes. I'll that's, I mean, that, that was an amazing, like, random, like, breaking news that I got there. I'd be like, what? <laughs> that's so random. It's a, a question. Uh, the next one. Yeah. Uh, question two. More probable than not. Mm-hmm. Will a major Japanese publisher announce a new game, either within existing IP or a brand new IP, <laughs> on the Xbox stage? Or will a formerly PC only title make its way to console? Or vice versa. Yeah. I will pick A here, is especially because I know that uh, Phil and Sarah have mentioned many, many, many times that they have worked tirelessly to get Japanese developers to kind of get behind them. And other than them announcing Metaphor and what they've been doing with Sega with Persona and all of that, I feel like it would be like a bigger statement that they're putting in the work if that happens. They're in desperate need of any kind of win potentially like actually like shockwave win that i feel like them getting any japanese uh, developer that it's happened before that we i remember code bane was revealed at the xbox 2017 showcase and they they had that so it's like they work with like bandai namco and all that so maybe it can happen and obviously they also got the game pass deal for the path of the goddess game that's coming from capcom i don't know if that's later this year but that's like on game pass so it's like yeah, I feel like they want to yeah. keep. They, they will want to keep working the Japanese angle, and more more importantly, could you imagine the hardware announced me dovetailing back to like the handle thing, since they're already putting in the work because they know that they could finally make waves waves in Japan. Could that be kind of like correlated? They announce the handhold, and here's a Japanese like guy that excited to put out because they know that in their home territory they have a place that's gonna like move, like move the needle. So yeah. I'm go- I'm going with a for that. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably more likely. Um, my only concern is like what. So like, okay, let's who, go who through. Would the who yeah. would it? Who would it be? Capcom. They already have Path of the Goddess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's already been revealed. Uh, Sega. Um, I don't know of anything that they have in active development. Mm-hmm. They just announced a ton of stuff at the Game Awards, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So they maybe Crazy maybe Taxi out. and Jet Set Radio get more and like more shown, but I think that doesn't count. Yeah, they, because, they've already revealed. Yeah, you want like new, new, right? So it's so new. It doesn't have to be exclusive, but it has yeah. to be has to be new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, similar to uh, how Wulong was announced, like as a new thing in 2022. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Well, they have a they've had a lot. They've mm-hmm. had Metaphor. They've had Yakuza. They've had Wolong. They've had Path of the Goddess. They've mm-hmm. had, uh, I think did I say Metaphor? They've had Metaphor. Yeah. Um, Visions of Mana. Yeah. Was. Was that this as would well? be like pie on the um, sky, pie in the sky thing? Could the long rumor FF9 remake could it be revealed here? That would be like a power move, like of them that they keep missing mm-hmm. so many remakes, and that is also a very big like where there's smoke, there's fire thing. Like FF14 is like doing FF9 like cosmetics and all that, and Joshi P was like, yeah, it's like there is a reason why there is um there 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 is a big reason why there's like all this um. All this FF9 stuff, but we're not ready to say why yet. It's obvious yeah. why. So, I, uh, well, I'm going to actually, before I say it, mm-hmm. I'm going to get you to pick a, and it's hard to pick a game, pick a, pick a publisher. Publisher. I would say because uh, their recent pivot, I would say Square Enix announces something new here. I'm going to go with Square. Okay. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah, my thought process is I think Capcom is uh, like there and the games are mm-hmm. announced, kind of. I probably would, if I picked this, I might have actually said Resident Evil 9. Mm-hmm. Uh, Square Enix, I think they're, like I said, on cooldown. I don't think they're going to announce anything mm-hmm. anytime soon. Um, who else is there? Uh, Sega, again, they just announced pretty much everything, I think, that's coming. Yeah, they shot on uh, blast that at the Game Awards. <laughs> yeah. I think, though, like, Wild card. I think that uh, Konami is starting to be realized that they are a game developing mm-hmm. publisher. Um, <clears throat> I think that they are still risk averse, mm-hmm. and that's why they're focusing on remakes and remasters for MGS. I think that uh, MGS Volume Two, mm-hmm. their collection Volume Two, is probably a PlayStation announcement, mm-hmm. um, especially if it has uh, four mm-hmm. on there. But uh, I don't. I think Castlevania might be fair game, mm-hmm. and uh, and to be f- I, and to be fair with Konami, uh, though Metal Gear Delta was announced at the showcase for PlayStation last year, 
where they showed gameplay was at the ID at Xbox later that year. So there is yeah. like there's been interaction with, with with Konami and Xbox. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm not picking this yeah. topic or that answer, yeah. but I, I would say that Dark Horse might be Konami and mm-hmm. maybe Castlevania. What was the last Castlevania game Gosh. that Konami made that wasn't a remake? Uh, Lords of Shadow 2 2014. <laughs> Yeah, and, and by the way, I would love a Lords of Shadow remake. Three. Oh, uh, yeah. I love that. Kojima was involved. Anyway. And with the first one specifically. Uh, he wasn't involved with the yeah. second one. So The second one was the guys that made uh, Metroid Dread. Mm-hmm. But the first one was, yeah, anyway. So I'm going to obviously take the latter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, will a, form, will a formerly PC-only title make its way to console uh, or vice versa? And I was gonna, I'm going to say yes because uh-huh. uh, I have to. Yeah. And I'm going to pick... Say it. A say console it. release for you probably this is probably not what you're thinking. Oh. But I, I'm I'm gonna say a console release for Valorant. Oh okay. Uh, I, I, I was that, gonna that, say World of Warcraft because they own it now. <laughs> so they do. As somebody who plays World of Warcraft a lot, it's just not gonna work, dude, on a controller. <laughs> is it, it, just, it just that complicated in in, in M and K for it to like be, translate? Have you played Final Fantasy fourteen? Um, yeah. And you play it with a controller? Yeah, no, the, the PS5 okay. version. So. so imagine playing Final Fantasy fourteen, except you had double the buttons and the, the global cooldown is is half a second, not one point five. And already it's um, like that was it's stretching the limits in the in fourteen. <laughs> and imagine that Final Fantasy was developed specifically to use a keyboard and mouse for almost twenty years. It would be pretty impossible. Is it impossible? <laughs> yeah. It's not impossible. Uh, is it likely? Mm. I don't know. Valorant, I think, one, uh, it, it's already been kind of leaked that they are, are hiring people to, to, to that port. work with consoles. Mm. to and, and, like, controller support is, like, if, like, iffy right now, I think. Last I checked, anyway, but it's coming. Um Xbox has a relationship with Riot with their Game Pass deal. Mm-hmm. I think Game Pass and Valorant uh, unlocking all the whatever they call them, heroes or, or whatever, agents, I think is what mm-hmm. they're called. <clears throat> I think that makes sense. I think that a shooter is a shooter, even though I know Valorant, like there's not going to be yeah. console players that are going to go pro on console and mm-hmm. PC players in that style of game. But there is hundreds of millions of people with Xboxes and Playstations who would play Valorant and pay for skins and stuff yeah. and give riot money mm-hmm. so like i think that is a thing they already announced yeah. that uh and this has been like kind of dying on the vine for a last little while but they announced that league of legends wild rift was coming to consoles mm, yeah, like, i remember that years yeah. ago and none it still hasn't yeah. happened yet uh i would love i would i would play so much of that if it yeah. came uh, do you remember the what... uh counter strike that made its way to 360 ps3 which one was was it counter strike global offensive i think that's what it was called uh yeah i think that was yeah 360 and then yeah. the for original 1.6 was on mm-hmm. xbox as well yeah so that's why um, i'm like there is like a precedent of those kind of like super hardcore like multiplayer pc shooters eventually making it to console and uh I know Valorant and Game Pass like made a big deal, like it made like a big partnership back in 2022. So that I could see Valorant, then that would be like the next step as they're like slowly. Yeah, if you play connecting. Riot games, mm-hmm. that deal is the number one reason mm-hmm. to get Game Pass mm-hmm. because I think there's like 160 legends in League of Legends mm-hmm. that you unlock characters, and there's like 20 or something like that in Valorant. Plus, there's other stuff for other games. It's a it's a really good deal. A Dark Horse too, I would say, although I don't think it gets announced here, uh, but I would love it if it did, or even at Summer Games Fest, is Magic the Gathering mm. Arena. Uh, that sense. game, yeah. ha- they said that that's coming to console. Mm-hmm. They literally, like Wizards of the Coast, announced that <clears throat> I think in 2022, and they said it's it's coming in 2023, and then early 2023, they said it's delayed until 2024. Mm. Makes sense, uh, yeah. They've had a partnership with Fallout. Uh, they've released a Fallout Magic the Gathering set that did really well. Um, so that would have been obviously negotiated with Microsoft through Bethesda. So there's something there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, with yeah. Microsoft, you should always like read like any kind of partnership that they do. It always bursts through. It's kind of like a, that's how the Sega thing happened when they were like, "Oh yeah, they're, we're partnered. To, we're, we're partnering with Sega so they can use Azure servers." And everyone was like, "Is that everything?" And it was like. 
They were because everyone was like, don't think much about that. It's just servers. And what happened with there? Persona finally made it to Xbox. They got they got more in bed, and now like they were feeling confident enough that Metaphor, the new game from Persona, from the Persona Dev team, is debuted at an Xbox station. They are doing the marketing with them. So it's like a, yeah. always read all those things. It's like everything happens for a reason. When Xbox just like does that. Tony only gave Disney the rights to Spider Man mm-hmm. for nothing else, no strings attached. Yeah, and then. <laughs> Spider Man's somehow exclusive anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, not even in just that game, also exclusive in the Freaking screen. Everything. Game. <laughs> and not only that, yeah, in the right. Marvel Rivals game that's coming out, it's like PlayStation gets like an exclusive Spider Man skin. <laughs> okay. Skin, yeah. I don't care about yeah, that. But- if they if you if you're gonna tell me that Spider Man was exclusive, I would have been mad. Yeah. <laughs> um I think they learned their lesson with that mm-hmm. though. Uh okay. Next question, last one in the more probable than not mm-hmm. series. More probable than not, question three. What is more likely? And this has three potential mm-hmm. answers. Uh, more likely a new acquisition, mm-hmm. uh, a new partnership, or a new game that's exclusively being published by Xbox, Xbox Games. Game Studios Publishing. So a exclusive game that is pub- is from a second party kind of mm-hmm. deal. Yeah. And that's what's so funny because partnership and, ex- and the publishing exclusive could be like the one and the same in that in, in those. So... Uh, what I did find, yeah, that is the same. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. Yeah, published by mm-hmm. Global Publishing. Yeah, as a second party. Mm-hmm. I thought about making it like non-indie mm-hmm. because I feel like that's there's going to be something there, like a yeah. Towerborn style, like love. Yeah. Anyway, but anyway, I, I'm like, interested in that. the like publishing like partnerships that they were supposed to like be exclusives that are done because I don't know if you saw before we recorded that apparently the studio that was making Contraband closed. Avalanche, New York. Uh, so. so, yeah, I did read that. Um, uh-huh. They were helping make Contraband. I don't think Contraband's canceled. Yeah, because they, we would have heard that by now. It's just finally, it's just been like, it's just interesting that yeah. apparently when they announced it, they were mentioning that the bulk of the game was being made in New York. So that's why I was, I found it interesting that then when they closed it, I was like, does that kill it or did they move development to yeah. the other Sweden? Avalanche but the, ones. Yeah, they also mm-hmm. announced it like three years ago. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 2021 was when Contraband um, was, was, was revealed. And so. I would wager that Contraband's probably one of the only like revenue streams going into that company. Mm-hmm. Like, or, or like one of like the major ones anyway. So yeah. like they don't want that to, to yeah, stop. Yeah, because they're not doing a Just Cause 5. They're not doing a, another Mad Max game. So yeah. So, so that's why I find, 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 find funny because I know they've done those kind of partnerships. So. I would say I'll go with Z with C Xbox Game Studios Publishing exclusives because uh, I know that what they're doing with Ara, the game that's coming out, the destroyed game that's supposed to come out later this year, kind of falls under this, and I feel like they will want to have more of those kinds of games to help pad out their library uh, to, to kind of like a, mm. look what has been happening with PlayStation this year is like first party mostly dor- dormant who's been like uh, covering them. They're publishing exclusives, right? So they're running. They publish, even though that's Team Ninja. Stellar Blade. They publish, even though that's uh, that's the uh, that, that's Shift Up. Uh, Hell Divers Two, second party with uh, Arrowhead. They publish has the Sony logo, but it's like that someone else did it, and that helped kind of like uh, pad the uh, the first five months of this year for them to the point that it's like, yeah, first party. What is like they're everyone that's on that system like it's eating, and over on Xbox has been it's clear that they're still letting their their first parties cook. But that also means that they have to find ways to also fill up the schedule as they want to, because they want their games to cook. They don't want to put them out because they need to prep something. So it's clear the market is okay with you putting out exclusives under your banner, even if you don't own stuff. That is okay. That's working well for Sony. That should work well with you. So you need to get more of those games in. So I say, I say, see, even the playing field. Yeah. So. Especially mm-hmm. for smaller teams, because mm-hmm. you also get the added benefit of like free marketing. Yeah. And, and on top of exposure. that, like we. I don't know if we'll hear more about it, but that's basically what they're doing with the former Rocksteady guys. They're going to publish their game. Yeah. They're funding it, but they don't own them. So I feel they're, yeah. they, they they finally realize that they can do that too. It or is, Toys for Bob, mm-hmm. same thing. That's another one. So I feel that they don't want to have more because they need to pad out the content. So Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's a good guess. Um, and acquisitions, I, I don't think to. they're in the market right now for another acquisition after they just Yeah, and I don't want them to yeah. do another like I wouldn't I would actually I'd be okay if they acquired like 
a small indie because mm-hmm. it's going to really change the lives of all those people. Um, but I think they're out of the, yeah. or they should be anyway, out of the business of acquiring yeah. like the, publishers. The only acquisition any... that I would be remotely okay because this would rescue them in a way, Crystal Dynamics. If Perfect Dark hits, it could be like a, yeah. it could be like a, they finally, they, they managed to get Crystal Dynamics on loan from Embracer for them to come out to, to get, for them to come work uh, at the Perfect Dark game. And then they could, they, they could be like, that worked really well. I think you guys are better think, with us. So that would be one. Yeah. That would be kind of like a rescue acquisition that I would be okay with because of that. I don't know if they're in trouble though, yeah. because they're are, they're making a Tomb Raider game, mm-hmm. and like the guy from Days Gone is 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 mm-hmm. over yes. there too. They just revealed the the new, the new Tomb Raider anim, mm-hmm. animated. Uh, I think it's a TV yeah, show. Yeah, TV show from Netflix. Movie. Yeah, that looks really cool. Um, Amazon, I think, is making a Tomb Raider live action show yeah, too. Yeah, Phoebe so Waller. I think that I by Phoebe, Phoebe Waller Bridge, who was the the chick that made Fleabag, which was a really well received show, and she was also the yeah. co star of the latest Indiana Jones movie. It's more like rescue them from the shit show that is Embracer, that is like yeah. everyone else, everyone that you think that they're doing great because their parent company is just such a disaster. That could be like a, you yeah. never know that they, they, they could just fall. Uh, it, it, it like yeah, by that's true. By six, well, if they, re- if if they, they release Tomb Raider mm-hmm. and it doesn't blow up, blow up, mm-hmm. then yeah, that could be a problem. That would be like if if an acquisition were to happen, I would rather them not acquire any more because it's like you acquired so much, you already closed four studios, you open a new one over there in Warsaw. So it's like a, I need Xbox yeah. to prove, be like, okay, prove us that you can handle all of this because so far it's like it's. It's been like this. It's been kind of like up and down of you proving that you have enough, like that you're able to kind of like manage all these studios. You already show that your hands off approach is like kind of like a little bit of a double edged sword. I mean, like, yeah, we're like so hands off because they want, we want them to do all of that. that everyone is like, maybe you should be a little bit more just to check in to see what they're doing. Don't yeah. be too hands off, but you don't want to be like overstepping too much, also. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to open that can of worms. Yeah, we're, but like, <laughs> we'll go for briefly, an hour, yeah. we we, uh, we talked about this a little bit. I don't think that there's any games that Xbox uh, or that was developed from start to finish under Xbox that have uh, under delivered, mm-hmm. um, at least under this new uh, leadership. Mm-hmm. I think there's examples that you could point to, like Redfall and stuff like that. Yeah, and that was already um, like started. That, That's that was the thing. Like, that was already. I think that. Yeah, and and you can look at the the layoffs too. I think you you can group them together as being kind of byproducts of mass acquisitions. Mm-hmm. So when Xbox acquires Zenimax, they are probably have their sights on Doom, mm-hmm. Wolfenstein, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Bethesda, yeah. ID, and that stuff like Tango mm-hmm. and Arcane Austin. Like those are kind of add-ons that are part of the de- like it's a package deal. Yeah, the package deal, deal exactly. Mm-hmm. And so they're not necessarily the targeted targeted part of the acquisition. So they are more likely, mm-hmm. I think, to be sacrificed for like a really horrible way of putting it, <laughs> which is why I don't think yeah. that teams like Ninja Theory or Double Fine are really in trouble mm-hmm. because those were targeted acquisitions. Mm-hmm. They didn't acquire like it's like when they when they acquired those studios, they were fishing with the fishing rod. Yeah. And when they acquired Arcane Austin and Tango, they were fishing with a yeah. like a dredge you, or you like could feel like every time that they grab the, any of the studios they all fill the specific niche like uh yeah, yeah we're acquiring obsidian. it was very yeah. targeted yeah it was like we're acquiring obsidian and an exile because it's like obsidian those those like first person rpgs that we love a lot let's make one of those in excel does it top yeah. down ones let's make one of those ninja theory makes cinematic games we don't do that let's get one of those uh playground does uh they were they were already doing Forza Horizon at that time, right? Yeah, it's like let's just put the ring on it. Let's do yeah. Forza Horizon. So it was and like I think I think other than Playground too, like with I think what's his name, Mike Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's very many people that were acquired by Microsoft that like left after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they didn't have like those like retention clauses and stock. Mm-hmm. Uh, what uh, vestments that uh, that Bungie has, for example, mm-hmm. yeah. or when other companies acquire, like when uh, WB acquired Rocksteady, mm-hmm. they a lot of the head people left. 2K acquires Rockstar, a lot of those people, like you know what mm-hmm. I mean. So there's definitely good stuff happening. I think the developers are happy. Yeah. At least that's what they're. Putting, I know the pushing founder, the founder of Ninja Theory left. Akeem something or Ahim something. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, but he was already. 
from what I read, he was already kind of like out the door, mm-hmm. and then he just got a huge payday. And, and yeah, basically, and, and, yeah. So yeah, the, that's the thing. Like the, the only like big like uh, high profile departures of those acquisitions is like that guy and Shinji Mikami from Tango, because the departure happened yeah. after Hi Fi Rush. So that's yeah, yeah. And I think uh, did he open a new? I think he, yeah, yeah. It'd be, because he had a non compete. I think mm-hmm, yeah, it did not compete. Ended and then he opened a new one. So and that happened. Yeah. That happened just recently. So, and you had people like uh, what's his name, uh, the guy from the, ta- not the guy from Bethesda that did all the marketing. Pete Hines. Pete ta- Pete Hines. Mm-hmm. He left, but his position is kind of unnecessary. Like overlaps mm-hmm. a bit with some of it. Yeah. So he would have lost probably a lot of. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that, power, that he, but like his, he would have to run by his campaigns. Like yeah, other his feels because like when they, they they mentioning like Bethesda was like a vertical integration that has been like uh, slowly happening as, the, as it becomes more and more because before it was like kind of like solid, but with the objective that they were gonna merge the companies together like more seamlessly, you wouldn't need a yeah. Pete Hines there because then it's like you have the Microsoft PR that would do the PR for you. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But anyway, that's kind of my take on that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's subject to change. Obviously, like yeah. these games could come out and suck. But mm-hmm. I feel like uh, I have. Yeah, I, I have feel. I faith. feel more like I'm in the. You have like bought everything you need to buy right now. Now just make sure everything you bought is doing well, so that it so, so that it's like yeah. that becomes the narrative now instead of like being an Xbox like be, following Xbox has just been like buying, 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 and that has feel that mm-hmm. that has felt like. That that has dominated the discourse for so long this generation. Instead of like uh, talking about the product, talking about the games, that we need to talk more yeah. about the games for that. So I would That's why I yeah. wouldn't want a new acquisition. I'd rather like them now start doing the publishing. That's why I push for that. Like if Sony's doing yeah. it, like I'm of the I'm of the mindset that if one does it, the other can do it too. It's like and and yeah. and it's clear like the market like uh, the market has rewarded Sony this year for literally having nothing from first party until Astro. And conquered later this yeah. year, but it does not matter because it's like they still have put out games through partnerships. Yeah, and Xbox should feel free for with that. So, yeah, there. I don't really want an acquisition either. Mm-hmm. I, I, like I said, the only thing that would kind of excite me is if they acquired like something like Sabotage, like mm-hmm. a smaller indie mm-hmm. where I would know now that they don't have to worry about funding for their next games mm-hmm. and they can still create. But even still, I would prefer them to not. I, I think that it's better for companies like Sabotage to just get the Game Pass mm-hmm. deals. And so anyway, uh, so my, I would obviously select a new partnership. Mm-hmm. And this might not have been super clear uh, when I just say new partnership, but I was thinking like them partnering with other large companies. Mm-hmm. So like my answer for this or guess is going to be like them partnering uh, like more or, or, or kind of doubling down on their partnership that they have with Meta, mm-hmm. if you want to even call it a partnership. Yeah. It's just they were kind of mentioned a bit uh, with the new uh, Meta Quest. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, there could be, I don't know, this is like a wild guess and it's probably, this is definitely less likely to happen than mm-hmm. a second party publishing deal. But uh, I, I could see um, them dipping their toes into VR in a safer way. Mm-hmm. Um, like less risk way. Yeah. I think developing their own headset from scratch and making exclusive games for that is probably very risky, mm-hmm. but finding a way to um, get VR working on an Xbox with Game Pass uh, in collaboration with the the people that are at this point, the kings of VR in mm-hmm. terms of users mm-hmm. uh, with 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 Meta. Yeah. Uh, and they are also the kings of VR when it comes to... Um, like uh an entry point mm-hmm. because the quest 2 is a very like, cheap now they it went down price, i remember yeah it's a very cheap entry point for vr and a very good headset uh, i think that could make sense and that that's probably what i would choose i mean they could announce a new streaming partnership with some company yeah. in like yugoslavia that i've never heard yeah. of or something i feel like that, them but... getting xcloud or kind of like their streaming kind of like native now inside like a medical is that's already like a good step because it's like gets them into the br space without having to like dedicate a lot of hardware like uh, budget into it kind of like what we're seeing with sony that they dedicated all r d into psvr2 and look how they're how poorly they're supporting it so it's like uh, that mm. would be much better because it's like then you know that meta now is like they've taken some swings some misses but now like they're pretty establishing and killing it so might as well do it yeah. that would be like a great partnership so cool <clears throat> all right so these last few questions mm-hmm. There is yeah. four more. Yes. These are double points. Okay. Because they're going to be harder and more specific. 
All right. <clears throat> Question one. Will there be a shadow drop? Yes or no? Yes. And if there is, what's the game going to be? Yes. Marcus Phoenix Collection. Or what's the shadow drop? Marcus Phoenix Collection. Okay. All right. And we kind of already went over mm-hmm. why. No. I'm going to also say yes, but I'm going to... Uh, I want to hear you. This technically counts. Mm-hmm. I want to hear uh, it. I, I think Shattered Space is shadow drop. In that same day? Ooh. Yeah. Even though they say the fall? DLC. Do you think they will be? They would push it forward. Did they say fall? Yeah, I never heard them. Yeah, uh, the, uh, Todd Howard mentioned it at the kind of fun interview he did with Greg Miller. Oh, okay, <laughs> so. I didn't hear that. I don't <clears throat> listen to kind of funny for. Yeah. I don't, but yeah. Crowville and those guys like did. So I saw it on Twitter. <laughs> so I got to. I went to the source. Be like, oh, okay, mm. cool. Well, I'm gonna change my answer <clears throat> then because that's information I didn't have. <clears throat> uh, okay, I still am gonna say yes. <clears throat> hmm. I'm not gonna say Marcus Phoenix collection. Mm-hmm. Okay. I took it from uh, <laughs> Tower, um, thirty-three immortals. Or no, no. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go big. Which one? Silk song. Silk song. Look, last time Silk song showed up was at Xbox. It's been two years yeah. since they promised. When they did that one year, they like, remember the choke is from 2022. Everything we're showing is gonna be showing up within the year. That's like that was kind of tantamount to Silk song completely missed. That could be kind of like a mea culpa. Hey, sorry that two years ago we told you it was going to be out within a year. It's out yeah. now. <laughs> it's out now. And I'm going to also put this stipulation out. Mm-hmm. Shadow Drop, is is a, there's a 24-hour window. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not like it's happening this second. Yeah. But if it's like the next day, mm-hmm. I'm counting that. I'll, I'll get it to you. Same, same with Marcus Phoenix. What about mine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Play out. Applies to both. Yes. So 20, um, 24, okay. a 24 hour period of them announcing it, it probably available within that same day or the very next day within that 24 hour window that works for me. Okay. Exactly. Um, next question. Mm -hmm. What game opens the show? Obviously, uh, we can completely discard call of duty from this because there's a showcase with that. Uh, not necessarily. They could still show a trailer. (laughs) Good. Yeah. I'm going to say you're probably going to open with gears because gears has opened before. So, and it's been so while it's been a while that could be like the biggest like let's punch you with this one. So I'm gonna go with gears opens. Right. Okay. That's what I was gonna say. I'm trying to think if I should change. Mm-hmm. So the reason why I say gears mm-hmm. is because there is a pattern, and I think it it it's smart, and I think Sony does this mm-hmm. too. There's always games that people know are gonna be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Concord, mm-hmm. or game. and it, it's not really you're not really excited during the show uh, to see like when that's coming. If you know it's coming, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. It's good to launch with those because they're big. They're gonna be awesome, and it's like you want to look at it in terms of a bo- bookends. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to open your show with like 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 I don't know uh, rabbits. Mm-hmm. Ubisoft Rabbit or Dance Central yeah. or Dance whatever. Like that's not those are things that if you need to show them, they're in the middle. You want to have bookends, mm-hmm. really big bookends. Yeah. And so I think that uh there isn't another game that's as big as Gears that we know for sure is gonna be there. Mm-hmm. The only other option I think would be Shattered Space. Mm-hmm. Star with Starfield I, again, like in twenty twenty one. Yeah, and that's exactly mm-hmm. the same exact same formula. We knew Starfield was going to be mm-hmm. there, and it was the first thing. Yeah, we knew Concord was going to be a state of play. It, it was, was the first, first thing. thing. What did they open with last year? Last year they opened with uh, crap. Uh, no, I was going to say Redful, but no, it wasn't. Redful had already been out. Uh, crap. What was it? Was it Fable? Yes, Fable. No. Fable was the first one. Yes. So either okay. they open with Fable again, or... But it was a game... So Fable is a game that we knew mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Previously, it was announced. It wasn't a new mm-hmm. announcement. Yeah, Gears would be and a new announcement something... this time, so... Uh, well, we knew that they, they have announced that Gears is in development. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And they have announced that it's going to be here. Mm-hmm. So, like... You know that there's not like a, it, it's not going to be like a, oh my God, this is the last thing is like, if mm-hmm. the last thing was gears, it would kind of suck mm-hmm, because it'd be we like, a, we already knew of that. It would be kind of like the excitement that pops you to get you, to get you going. And 
the only thing we don't know is if they're even going to call it Gear 6. We assume it is because Gears 5 ended in a cliffhanger. So uh, that's what uh, that's what I'm I like. I think yeah. they go back. Hmm? Sidebar. What do you, do you think the title is like regardless of if it's a if it's a number uh -huh. or a or like a named yeah, because Entry. they went from Gears of War to just Gears. So Yeah, do you think it's Gears or Gears of War? I think they have to go back to Gears of War. Yeah. I also think mm -hmm. that. That's uh yes. Well, that would be a, a sidebar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I still think I still think it makes way more sense to open with Gears than literally mm -hmm. anything else. But okay, so next question. Closer. Fable. Fable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say uh unfortunately. Not because I think it's going to be a bad game, but I think they're going to close with Doom. Mm -hmm. I say unfortunate because it's already been leaked. Yeah. But uh, I think that Doom is really far along. Mm -hmm. I think it is probably something that they had probably hoped would come this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to miss this year, but I think it's going to have a pretty decent gameplay overview yeah. tr or trailer, like a two, two and a half, yeah. three minute gameplay trailer. And Eternal, if I remember, that was supposed to come out in 2019 and then got pushed to March of the next year. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that did well for them putting it in March. Obviously the yeah. pandemic helped because that was the game for that first week of the pandemic. Along, yeah. Alongside I Animal go Crossing. Pick that up yeah. <laughs> in the store with P full PPE yeah. gear. Same with The Last of Us. <laughs> That's so funny um, thinking of that. <laughs> Yeah. Meanwhile, be me, the digital guy, just laying in bed, press buy, waited to play, and that, and that was it. Oh man, those those were rough. Those, those were legendary times. I can't yeah. believe it's like Doom Eternal feels so much farther. Like feels like longer. Like that happened longer, but no, it was just like four years ago. I love Doom Eternal. Yeah. I think it has the best like FPS single player FPS gameplay loop that's ever existed yeah they are so it's so yeah. i love the made. movement of doom eternal a lot i love like how snappy it is like uh, the feel of that i think i prefer slightly the 2016 game a little bit more because it gives you a little bit more freedom whereas doom eternal like forces the gameplay loop a little bit more on you that you have to like really be rotating on everything different feels and the marauder i hate the marauder <laughs> freaking hate the marauder yeah so <laughs> i think it kind of yeah it depends on yeah. your taste yeah. because the thing i don't like about 2016 and and i love 2016 mm -hmm. but the thing i don't like is they designed it in a way where there's an, a gun you can get that answers every problem mm -hmm. the super shotgun is the solution to every problem the game has mm -hmm. there's nothing in that game that you can't beat with a super shotgun no and to me like to some people that's probably just fun to shoot stuff with a shotgun mm -hmm. and win like that's maybe that's like what you're looking for for me i obviously want to like engage i want neurons in my brain to fire i want to think and and, and, Etern and eternal eternal was like a puzzle there were specific like yeah, it was yeah. a combat mm -hmm. puzzle mm -hmm. you had to know what they're weak against you had to conserve ammo you had to know when to get armor and to get health and chainsaw mm -hmm. and, and, and your it was a puzzle and it was so freaking fun it was so well made it, it, like if it, if the last of us 2 wasn't such a cinematic and and like narrative leap mm -hmm. for for the medium like it was so close mm -hmm. and uh it would have been my game of the year for sure yeah, for doom eternal yeah it's like the, the, my entire opinion got completely changed because of the marauder but i agree with the puzzle element of eternal it, being i like, mean yeah. the marauder is not that bad you just you gotta know what like the i forget what it's called the ca what's it called the the gun that's like a like a, yep. it just shoots like a big straight beam. It's called like the catalyst or something mm -hmm. like that. Or anyway, yeah. you, there's like their eyes glow mm -hmm. and it's a per, and they're open and you can shoot them and sun them and it, it anyway. Yeah, you just have to be very specific with the Marauder and uh, fighting they two, fighting, definitely... yeah, fighting two of them in the DLC. I was like, nope, I'm getting back to this later. <laughs> Plus they got the dog too. Yeah, like, yeah they, <laughs> those were designed to. Th those were like. We just want to check and make sure you're following the, mm. the mechanics here. If you're not, this guy's going to make you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people obviously are not going to like that, some people. But anyway. Mm. Uh, yeah. I said I Fable, think that's you said Doom. So. Yeah. All right. Final question. Biggest pop. I feel it could be Doom. Because this would be the first I time. Feel it if it would be that would be doom if it wasn't leaked mm, yeah and that's kind of like so this is uh, this is like the talk one yeah yeah i just want to quantify it a little bit so like how i will measure this mm -hmm. is like watching or my own reaction you're you probably if you're going to react your reaction mm -hmm. other people who are watching it live their reactions uh -huh. and like general 
like response on Twitter and stuff like that. So the thing that people are the most hyped about. Yeah. So I think if it's already leaked and everybody that I'm going to be looking at mm -hmm. for the reaction knows it's leaked because they're all always talking like, about it ter terminally mm -hmm. online. Yeah. I don't think it hit. I don't think it pops as unless it's like the what they show is like that insane, mm -hmm. which it could be because it's like kind of like a palette flip uh, being like more medieval focused. Mm -hmm. it, it feels more like Quake, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I feel like this probably started as a Quake game. And they and retractively kind of, made it a Doom for prequel. <laughs> for like marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, but still, you can guess that if you want to feel free. Yeah. Pop. It could be Doom, but I'm trying to think uh, what also could be because, but because I'm like, they already stole the thunder of uh, Indiana Jones because of the developer direct. Uh, Hellblade is out. Arrow is already out. Uh, Avowed showed okay. It's, it's I know it's gonna be a good game, but I, guess, I don't think Avowed could be like oh my OMG kind of game. Uh, I'm gonna go Doom. I feel I'm gonna go Doom because like uh, as long as it's not shown first at Keeley's. Uh, I feel like this is our, our first look of a very different looking Doom, depending on what could be Quake. As you mentioned, it could be one. So I'm going to go with Doom. So. If they show Doom at the Keeleys, uh -huh. I would actually be so excited. Yeah, because, because, because for... that's one reveal that I know about taken out of Xbox. And then I have no idea mm -hmm. what the ending is going to be, unless it's Call of Duty, which would be the worst. Yeah possible thing they could do mm -hmm. if they ended on a trailer that then connects to anyway yeah because um, they didn't even do that with starfield gonna... either uh when they ended uh no it was clockwork right? yeah clockwork was the last one huh we, we never even talked about that or mm -hmm. south of midnight which i don't know if either of those i think south of midnight should be far away mm -hmm. that could show up i think that has a higher yeah especially because they, they, but... they acquired uh they, they acquired compulsion before they acquired an, an, an XL who's doing clockwork so that should be theoretically uh, further along. Well, they acquired them in like within the same year. Uh, a year, like uh, two or a, three months. Twenty eighteen for, uh, for. Oh yeah, I yeah. Oh was, yeah, they, they were both in twenty eighteen. Sorry, yeah, it was just E3, a six, a six month and XO fall and XO XO, XO eighteen. That was when uh, Obsidian and Exile got acquired. So yeah, you're right. So. Yeah, but in Exile released Wasteland three in like twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, what's it called? Uh, we Happy Few uh, was 2018. We Happy mm -hmm. Few was 2018. So they have more time. They have less developers, mm -hmm. but they have more. Anyway, I think that game is pretty far along. Yeah. I, I think if it was coming this year, it would have been the developer direct, though. Yeah. But we'll see. I would say like a biggest pop if it was if somehow a new Halo game was announced, which it's so rare to think about it. That, just imagine that. like. A... <clears throat> yeah. So I, I'm going to say biggest, my biggest pop, I'm going to say, is a Fallout 3 remaster. Mm -hmm. Because I already said remake remaster is coming. I think that um, it, it really depends on what was in development mm -hmm. first. Uh, I've heard more about Fallout, and the, I think with the TV show, like there's Fallout Fever right mm -hmm. now, and it and if it is a remake and not a remaster, mm -hmm. uh, like it looks like Starfield or it looks like next gen Fallout Four, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be a big pop, um, especially if the release date is really soon mm -hmm. or a shadow drop or something like oh, that yeah. that would be a huge pop um i'm gonna i'm gonna tail that into the last bonus question which is dream reveal mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go first on this one and uh because you already said it and it's halo, halo? yeah that would um, be dream reveal. <laughs> i have low expectations that halo will be here especially after ain said he probably it probably won't be there and he's more connected mm -hmm. with people at halo than i am um <clears throat> All right, I'm going to try to be not go on a rant. I'm just going to keep try to <laughs> keep this brief. <laughs> Halo is the only franchise in gaming that is like uh like a, a Nintendo franchise. That's like Mario or Zelda. Mm -hmm. There is Sony has a lot of great franchises, but they don't have like something like Halo mm -hmm. because God of War is People are going to be looking forward for like forward, sorry, for the next God of War game, mm -hmm. and they're going to play other shit before that happens. Mm -hmm. And the next God of War game will be kind of like the last God of War game. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing for Uncharted if that comes. It's the same thing for The Last of Us. It's the same thing for Horizon potentially, unless all those things that they talked about come to fruition and are good. Mm -hmm. But Halo is a first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. It is a top-down uh, RTS. Um, what do you call it? Uh, no, like the arc twin stick shooter. Mm -hmm. It's the RTS. 
It is the Master Chief story. It is the ODST story. It is the Noble Team story. It is so many things. <laughs> it, it is the core of Xbox. It's the most important brand they have. I, it, it, it's, it's imagine Mario or Zelda mm -hmm. being in a place where you don't know like anything or have any idea what the next thing is going to be. Mm -hmm. Like I, I anticipate that Nintendo is working on a 3D Mario mm -hmm. game. Yeah. And I would bet you that they're making another Zelda game. There's no, no doubt in my mind that we will see those things happen. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably see more spinoff Mario games. Yeah. We'll probably see more 2D Mario games. Mario Party is probably <clears> going <throat> to have a new game. There's nothing in my mind. There's no yeah. doubt at all. Yeah. Halo. I literally yeah. have no idea. I have no idea mm -hmm. where the next Halo story is going to come from. I don't know if it's going to be a first-person game. I don't know if it will be made by 343. I don't know if the story of Infinite that led it, ended on a cliffhanger is going to uh, get finished. <laughs> I don't know if the BR is a thing. I don't know if that's coming out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's – I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. And it's like the most important – like by, like it's for me specifically, it's, it's my most – yeah, it, for it's my most important IP personally. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite franchise, and I think it's the most important IP yeah. for Xbox. Like, obviously, it's not the most, uh, like, it's not going to make them the most money. It's mm -hmm. not Call of Duty. It's not uh, World of Warcraft. It's not Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. But, like, it is the core of this whole platform. Yeah. It is and the reason the platform exists, basically. <laughs> they need a healthy Xbox needs, a healthy Halo. in my opinion, a healthy Halo. Mm -hmm. And... For there to be three consecutive showcases with nothing mm -hmm. it's wild. about Halo, not even a mm -hmm. not even a TV show, even though that wasn't great, mm -hmm. that wasn't even there. Yeah, not a remaster, like not a mm -hmm. spinoff, yeah. not a Lego game. Yeah. It's so nothing. It's so wild when you think of the Xbox One. Like, imagine from Xbox One onwards, it's like. Uh, Halo was at the Xbox One first E3. They showed up with MCC in, in 2014. Halo 5 was in 2015. Halo Wars 2 was in 2016. Uh, E3 2017 was the first one with no Halo of any kind. But it was like, <clears throat> the next year, Infinite was revealed. 2019, we got to see the first cutscene. 2020, we got to see the first gameplay tra uh, trailer with uh, Craig, the, 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 the Craig meme in 2020. 2021, we got the uh, Master Chief and... Uh, weapon cutscene before when they first meet in the in halo infinite on yeah. top of the like multiplayer it's like halo went from being shown up like in almost close to a decade it only missed one time understandably so based on timing mm -hmm. but now it's like it has missed like three times now <laughs> so it's like a, there's a certain like yeah, I, I agree with, four. yeah i agree with like that there's a certain like uncertainty for like such a storied franchise kind of like a, that should be considered next to like the Marius and Zelda's of like historic importance to its brand. That is like the most uh, question, biggest question mark of the entire of the uh, of, of those established franchises. Like there's no question mark about God of War. You know, like you, you mentioned, it's like everyone knows it's successful. Another sequel that is in that same vein, it would be like another one of those, which is cool. Everyone will like play it. Everyone will love it. They know what it is. But like Halo right now, there's like yeah. a big uncertainty that there's like so many different rumors of where that thing could go, like what direction they want to take it, that any direction could make it like an interesting reveal because there's like no straight line for that. So I get I, I get where you're coming from with that one. So yeah, my dream reveal would be like a big uh, middle finger to Sony and bringing back uh, Knights of the Old Republic remake. And it's now on Xbox because that was a PS5 exclusive somehow, despite the history of yeah. KOTOR being on Xbox. Uh, and then everything that happened where apparently Sony wanted to wash his hands from it, he got removed from Aspire, Saber Interactive was uh, uh, took the full reins and it got removed from Embracer, so they're kind of like on their own thing, so they're not like on that shit show anymore. Uh, that should have potentially not precluded for it being exclusive, and then that could be like Xbox being like, no, that is not exclusive. We want to help you. We're going to like take reins of this. Like, even if it's not exclusive, they want to put it like on everything because that's the multi-platform reality, but it's showing up here after that was originally revealed as an exclusive from that was going to be published by the, by your, by your opponent. That could be like a good one. And like a historic, like a uh, rearrangement of something that should have never happened. That should have been here yeah. always. They're just on history. Well, Xbox would, they would negotiate it in a different way. Mm -hmm. So like, like for Aspire, what they were doing was probably mm -hmm. not the most ambitious remake mm -hmm. ever 
Um, and they're a smaller team that mostly does mobile ports. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whatever amount of money Sony gave them was probably worth it to mm -hmm. them. Um, but for Saber, that's like a real, that's a bigger team. Yeah. And, and if Xbox comes to what comes to them and it's like, listen, we're going to give you this amount of money mm -hmm. to, to put the game on game pass on console. Mm -hmm. And I will still let you sell it mm -hmm. on PC, on, on PlayStation, PlayStation on, on switch too. If it works there, you can make all the money you can mm -hmm. on everywhere. You can possibly sell it, but you market um, it here. We just, we just want it the marketing mm -hmm. and we want it even if it's not on game mm -hmm. Pass, we just want the marketing here i'm sure the amount of money they'll give them will go up if it's on and game also Pass. Uh, help develop the, or pay for it but yeah and from what i understand you could correct me if i'm wrong uh, halo one anniversary and halo two anniversary saber worked on those right alongside 343 i think like uh, there's like previous i'm pretty sure they did at least halo one anniversary uh -huh. I'm I'm pretty sure that was Saber, yeah. yeah so, I don't know about the So one. there's like previous like, again, like there's previous uh work that they've done with Microsoft. So that could be like a way to leverage them. Since they're already leveraging yeah, and, some embracer stuff with like Crystal Dynamics. So that could be that could be yeah. too. That could be like a pop because that would fix a big mistake from three years ago that that should have never like even me, uh I prefer playing on PlayStation than my Xbox just based on where the last generation went. But even I know the the, the historic importance of Kotor. One and two, on on, yeah. on on the Xbox platform, how that like was gonna skip and become an exclusive for your competitors, like that was wild, like that was just so wild. So that would be like a dream reveal, especially because I still want that game. I still want that Kotor yeah. remake. I need Kotor to live in in like modern time, like in a modern way. Yeah. So I think that the the heads of Saber too is Tim Willits mm -hmm. and Todd Hollinshed, and both of them are former ID guys, so they know. <laughs> I don't know how many of the of it is still there mm -hmm. that they worked with, but they definitely have relationships with people that at matters. Bethesda. And that that like yeah. you know, those were, that's how like Daryl Daryl Gallagher that used to work at Crystal Dynamics and was at the initiative. That's how he brought in Crystal. Like those yeah. like the, the, those previous connections do work. So yep. No, that'd be huge. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be really huge. Actually, that would be a massive pop. Mm -hmm. That would be the biggest pop probably. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's a dream for me because other it's like, than Halo, yeah, that's what it's gonna. I might like. even, I might even cry. If yeah, Halo is, <laughs> even if it's like, like you remember the original Halo Infinite trailer where it literally did you didn't even know it was Halo uh, until it showed Master Chief yeah. holding his helmet. Even if it's that, I would just be like, sobbing. I'll never forget like that 2018 like first trailer when they they shook us with this space engine. I was like, oh, so that's why it was taking a little longer because like they're reworking, they're making it look like what I remember Halo looking. It's like it's, it feels like a. Halo 5 course correction. I was like, this is exciting. So, yeah. yeah. I, I would say, like, in general, like, when you get past, like, 10 years old, mm -hmm. that's kind of when you're, like, in your gamer. That's, yeah. like, when you're, like, locked in. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of when it stops being a toy and it starts being a hobby. Yeah. And so that's when I was, like, 11 when Halo 1 came mm -hmm. out. And they released a new Halo game every the three years, years or less, mm -hmm. every single time from Halo 1 to, two. to Halo 5. Yeah. One, two, three, reach, four, mm -hmm. uh, MCC, um, five, and that's not even counting mm -hmm. Halo Wars and Halo, and all the other and stuff. And even from reach to four, then, that was two year gap also. So it's like you had you yeah, had them like it, uh, you you had them like very. It was such a mistake to not make Halo Four a launch title for Xbox One. Mm -hmm. That's another Don Matrix. Yeah, fumble, especially with how great it looked when the MCC. I was like, wow, this could have been like a showcase game if you just wait a year. You just waited a year. To have this at 60 launch. FP. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Yep. And what did Sony have in the first year or two? Kill Zone. Nothing. <laughs> and you could have had Halo 4 uh, at launch with, you could have had a beta mm -hmm. and people could have told you ordinance drops are lame mm -hmm. and you could have launched without them. Yeah. You could have fully made the Spartan Ops modes and had that launch as a PVE co op extra campaign. Mm hmm. On top of the original campaign, which is still one of the best campaigns, my favorite campaign. I love anyway. Halo Four. I love Halo Four campaign a lot. So. Yeah, another. That's another can of worms. Mm -hmm. But yeah. anyway, that's it. Yeah, that's right. So we'll have to uh, check out the showcase, tally the scores. Uh, I think letting you pick first was a mistake. I think that <laughs> I, I was gonna... a little bit more in tune with you than you thought <laughs> with my picks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that might hurt me in the in the in the box score mm -hmm. at the end, but. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate you coming on. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like uh, it felt good to podcast again mm -hmm. uh, on my own show, which yeah. is nice. I'm looking forward to uh, joining you next week mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, debrief of what we recap. see. Yeah, 
of the next three shows. Yeah, and there's coming. other stuff too. I don't know. I don't know what we're covering uh, yeah. in total, but like, there's going to probably be some cool stuff yeah. with Devolver. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite shows to watch, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other stuff too. Yeah. So I'll it'll keep, be interesting. Yeah. I'll keep an eye on like the Warrior sixty fours and all of that. Like once they do like the recaps to see uh, outside like the big showcases, like what pops are there. But I'm definitely gonna yeah. like make the uh, make what we cover uh, whenever we convene the next week. It's gonna be Summer Game Fest, Xbox, and Ubisoft. And Ubisoft obviously is gonna be yeah. like the most fresh. So, yeah, I forgot to, I forgot to do Ubisoft here. I think very quick. I think that Splinter Cell gets shown. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. I think Prince of Persia gets shown. Yeah. The remake and it's awesome. <laughs> I think that uh, the only thing that would really make like really make a big huge pop for me would be division three mm-hmm. but i think that's at least a year yeah away. and they already announced this so it's like we're gonna have like oh my god they're doing the division yeah pop too a big since they just announced it like in a random press release last year so yeah but if they actually show it and, mm-hmm. and it looks yeah but anyway yeah splinter Cell. i'm all for that splinter Cell. i miss splinter Cell so much gosh i love but i would rather Cell. have a new one than a remake yeah i i splinter Cell is great don't get me wrong the first one is the worst one yeah but if they remake the it, full, yeah, if they fully remade it, that is almost unrecognizable from the first. It's just kind of like, oh, this, this is this level, but it's not even the same level. This and I would want that to be like a full on remake instead of like a elaborate be remaster cool. because I agree with that. It's like there's some roughness in that original. So I originally got that game because I wanted Metal Gear, mm-hmm. but you could, on Xbox, yeah, but... and it really wasn't. But when Pandora Tomorrow came out. And the Spies vs. Mercs mode on Warehouse, just playing that every day. That was like the Halo before Halo for me. Yeah, it was. And that's what it I wanted. It literally was. <laughs> so, that yeah. was right before. That was still before Halo 2. And uh, Chaos yeah. Theory is goaded. Absolutely goaded. Uh, a stealth game. Yeah. It is. I prefer to multiplayer. Mm-hmm. I prefer to campaign. It's not even close. Yeah. Chaos Theory And the co-op great. is amazing. It was amazing in Chaos Theory also. So. Even the ones that people don't talk about, like Conviction mm-hmm. was an awesome yeah. campaign. Blacklist was really good. It, that also, yeah. another thing, that should have been a next-gen launch title. Mm-hmm. Like what, what, yeah. what? That came out in like August, August or something like that. Two, three months before the PS4 and Xbox One. Without them like having like a next-gen version ready, it was like stupid. And like right before GTA uh, as well. Like stupid moves, especially because hey, Blacklist was so good at taking like the style of Conviction and marrying it with Chaos Theory. Such a great idea, and that one of the better stealth games that happened that generation, close to Dishonored 2 is like a, a immersive sim, like malleability, how you could complete those missions. So, Blacklist is yeah. so good. So, yeah, yep. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, really appreciate you joining yeah. us against Alex from Season Gaming. Do you want to take a minute here to promo yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I do a weekly podcast called the X Bottom Podcast, where it's like an all encompassing podcast called the X Bottom. That obviously all three controllers have the X Bottom with them. So I love talking about all three systems. Uh, uh, I post every Thursdays uh, from 10 a.m. onwards, depending on when the when my uploads go, depending on how my internet's doing. Uh, you can find my written content over at seasongaming.com where I have, I have reviewed seven games so far this year, which include The Last of Us Part II Remastered, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, Skull and Bones, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Final Fantasy XVI The Rising Tide, TMNT uh, Arcade Mutant Game, which sucked, and Stellar Blade has been like my reviews. You can go check that and also my old content on my own website, thecriticalcorner.com. So. Yeah, Alex has been prolific uh, both last year and this year yeah. with the reviews on SG. So definitely, you've probably already checked out his stuff if you've ever frequented mm-hmm. uh, SG because half of it or more is <laughs> or <the> mine. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, again, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I really like podcasting. I'm glad to be back in the saddle uh, for now at least. Um, hopefully, we can c- I can continue this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to the Xbox show. I always do. It's the one time of the year where I like tell mm-hmm. my family like, this is the one thing I need to watch a video about video games for an hour and Same. a half. One Sunday a year. Same. It's my and one uh, Sunday they, out of 52 because it's the only time we do it on a Sunday. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they let me do it. Especially it's, uh, it's also kind of convenient to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it's like pretty close to Father's Day. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I kind of use that <laughs> yeah. to, you know, make it like guilt them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But uh but yeah, no, I can't wait. It's my favorite time of, of the year for video games. I look forward to this more than anything, and I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. 
So awesome. Thanks again for tuning in. I might do a reaction to the stream, uh, like a live stream reaction. We'll see. Uh, it's going to depend on what the situation is like at my house, how crazy everybody is uh, at the time. But uh, yeah, TBD, yeah, you'll definitely yeah, TBD, at least see them. TBD for me for our reaction too. I'm still debating if I'm going to do like a live reaction or just watch and then record afterwards a recap. So we'll see. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be watching it live. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I am, then I probably will do that. But uh, it really depends. Like it's sometimes with the kids, you don't mm -hmm. really have concrete schedules. So if not, then I'll watch the VOD mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see what I do there. But anyway, uh, if I do, I am able to watch it and you are doing a reaction, maybe I'll hop on mm -hmm. if, if you're yeah. if you're having company. But we'll see. Yeah. I'll let you know. So. Awesome. Anyway, thanks for uh, checking out. It's, this episode was supposed to be around an hour. It's two hours, 44 <laughs> minutes. So it went a little oh, yeah, over. It's, but it's the uh, season. It's, I was expecting. Yeah, it's the season. So it's like, I'm, yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> I was expecting to talk about a PlayStation showcase for like five minutes. We went I think it was like 45 <laughs> minutes. That's the thing. Like I uh, always have a lot to say. Uh, I love to say about this yeah. thing. So <laughs> yeah, blame Sony. Mm -hmm. Anyways, thanks again for stopping by. Appreciate it very much if you made it all the way to the end. Thanks again to Alex for joining me. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>